Tonight, these Broncos begin their quest, and preparing them for their history-making run is coach Mike Shanahan. I believe we've got what it takes to go in there and win every game, but it's going to take a team effort with guys really committed and not uh, really swallowing the uh, three-peat type uh, height. John Elway's famous number seven will be retired at halftime tonight when the world champion Denver Broncos face the Miami Dolphins, a matchup of two of the best teams in the NFL. As we start our 30th season of ABC's Monday Night Football. with a Super Bowl cheer. You better be ready. Strap in and hold tight. Miami wants to square it in Mile High tonight. On Monday night. That's right. A spectacular night in Denver. Even a hint of fall in the air. Temperature in the mid 60s. Mile High Stadium sold out. The Broncos against the Dolphins. Al Michaels, along with Boomer Esiason and Leslie Visser. If this were a carnival tent, there'd be a barker outside who'd be saying right about now, "Come on in." See if the Broncos can win an unprecedented third straight Super Bowl with a 24 year old quarterback who's never made a start. Come on in and see the best running back on the planet Terrell Davis. Come on in and see a quarterback who holds every meaningful career NFL passing record in Dan Marino. You have two coaches who have four Super Bowl rings between them and as a sideshow at halftime in what's sure to be a memorable and emotional ceremony John Elway gets his number retired. Apart from that not a lot happening. Glad you're under the big top tonight. What a night in Denver. The feature on your TV set where available brought to you by National Car Rental. Back in Denver, Boomer Esiason could be beginning his 16th season as an NFL quarterback, but Cheryl Esiason, for one, very happy he's starting his second season in the Monday night booth instead. Boomer, quarterback's the big story, of course, here in Denver. Elway retires. Mike Shanahan says during the offseason, Bobby Brister's the guy, makes the switch to Brian Greasy 10 days ago. What's your take? Well, all you have to know is that the Denver Bronco offense in preseason under Bobby Brister went sleepwalking through their games. But when Brian Greasy hit the field, all of a sudden they started scoring points, Al. And that's what coaches look for. They want to see points on the board, and that's exactly why Brian Greasy is playing tonight. Look for Mike Shanahan and get him involved early throwing the ball. Against a very tough defensive team. Jimmy Johnson retired for about a day or half a day in January, but he's back and he's refreshed and he's got a team that could wind up in the Super Bowl on January 30th. Well he should be refreshed. He has one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time on his roster. He also has one of the best defenses in all of football. This is a team that is built in the Jimmy Johnson mold not to score a lot of points but to hold the other po the opposing team down with points. So look for Jimmy Johnson to get those guys flying. He smells blood. He thinks he can win the night. And what a win it would be on the road against the Super Bowl champions. Year 30 of Monday Night Football. We begin in a moment to the following presentation of the National Football League. And great to have back again this year, patrolling the sidelines like none other, Leslie Visser. Leslie. Al, thank you, and Boomer, there is no place we would rather be. Well, as you guys know, Mike Shanahan has never lost a season opener, but he's never faced one without John Elway. Mike, what gives you confidence that Brian Greasy, who's only thrown three regular season passes, can defend a Super Bowl champion? Well, I just like the way he handles himself. He's got a great feel for our offense. He understands defenses. And you take a look what he's done in preseason, how he handles himself in practice. I've just got a lot of confidence the way he'll go about his business. In the face of Miami's great defense, virtually a nine-man front, how can you put him in position to succeed? We're going to have to have everybody play well. It's just not Brian Greasy. The 10 other guys really got to get the job done. They got some great defensive backs. 
our wide receivers are going to have to get open, and we're going to have to block them on the line of scrimmage. So it's going to be a team effort. Well, they do call you the mastermind. Yeah, Good right. luck to you. Back to you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. Olindo Mare will kick off for Miami. We're going to see Greasy immediately. Chris Watson, a rookie from Eastern Illinois, that Shanahan's alma mater. Will run back kickoffs and punch this year. Flash bulbs popping, and the ball winds up in the end zone, and Denver will take over at the 20-yard line. So here comes Brian Greasy. Two years ago, led Michigan to a share of the national championship and a Rose Bowl win over Washington State. Played very sparingly last year, a lot in preseason, won the job a week and a half ago. Behind him, the unparalleled one. Terrell Davis out of the backfield. The great blocking back Griffith. Smith and McCaffrey outside. Sharp the tight end. Three great receivers, obviously. Jones, Schlereth, Nalen, Neal, and Lepsis up front. Lepsis, the new guy, replacing the departed Harry Swain. It's a light line and a very quick line. Each of those guys under 300 pounds. That these days is very unusual. And Greasy to throw on first down. And he completes the pass to Sharp. So Mike Shanahan not being conservative on first down puts Greasy right into the action with a pass and it's up to the 25 yard line and a gain of five defensively Mixon Bowens and Gardner great in the middle Taylor very active on the outside the linebackers Rogers Thomas and Robert Jones who played for Jimmy Johnson in Dallas years ago Buckley and Madison are the corners Jackson and Marion are the safeties it's a great defense the Dolphins last year allowed the fewest points in the league and Greasy to throw on second and five underneath it is dropped and it is a live ball it is a fumble and the Dolphins come up with it they're saying incomplete pass and you could see Right from the beginning, Mike Shanahan wants to get Brian Greasy involved in the game, get rid of some of those butterflies. Rod Smith juggling it, the one official who had the better view of it, made the call that he juggled it and dropped it. The head linesman behind him, looking at the play as if the pass was completed. Good look here. Very close. Very close. Oh. I don't, I don't, can oh. we have our first challenge of the of the night? Well, if he has control of the ball and both feet down, which he appears... I, and you're going to have a challenge. Have to. And so right off the bat, we have a coach's challenge. And this is a challenge from Jimmy Johnson. If he wins the challenge, then the pass, of course, the result would be in Miami's favor. Here is Jimmy now explaining to Johnny Greer, the referee, what he is challenging. Greer making the announcement to the crowd. You can see here Rod Smith has two feet down, and it looks like he has possession. If, if he has possession and they rule it that way, then it's Miami's ball on the fumble. Right, it would be a completed pass and then a fumble. If they overrule it, if they overrule the challenge, then the play stands. Johnson loses a timeout. So right off the bat, you've got the replay booth up there where the replay people only have control of the game in the last two minutes of a half apart from that it's up to the coach now Johnny Greer supposedly in 90 seconds is going to go over review this perhaps bring in the other official who made the call well from that angle right there they have to overturn it that looks like a good catch to me the key here if you're going to overturn it does he have possession of the ball and are both feet down appears to have it it's very close. Sam Madison was the guy who recovered the fumble. They may look at this. It's conceivable they'll look at this and say he may not have put the ball away, that he didn't have control of it. Because it's, it's rolling around, even though it appears that he has possession. And now the question becomes, do they overturn it or sustain it? In the play, the call in the field stands. It's an incomplete pass. So Jimmy Johnson loses a timeout. You know, it's it's that indisputable visual evidence again. You, you, you look at it a lot of different ways than we did, and it's not a, a really clear-cut call. And you also have to remember that ultimately Johnny Greer, the official, is making the call. 
and and really he has to decide whether or not he thinks that it is clear cut and and I would say by just listening to him there that he probably said hey you know what I can't really tell so let's leave it the way it is it was disputable visual evidence so instead of an overturn it's now third and five after the incomplete pass greasy has thrown on his first two plays and now three for three here as he throws and up at the 30 yard line it is brought in by Ed McCaffrey oh, for a first down and you could see the things about Brian Greasy that Mike Shanahan loves he's sitting in the pocket against a team that has a good pass rush he feels it he steps up and he delivers the football actually Al on the second play he changed the play at the line of scrimmage but look right here he puts the ball he's a nice spiral on it easy catchable ball he's behind McCaffrey a little bit but because of the the touch, McCaffrey's able to make the catch. Three in a row, that's getting, that's getting him involved pretty quickly. And now the first running play as they finally give the ball to Terrell Davis on their fourth play of this drive. Davis, who rushed for over 2,000 yards last season and has had a spectacular four years after being chosen from the University of Georgia in the sixth round. Oh in 1995 gains one second to nine well you talk about value a guy that really when you look at him he's 5'11 210 pounds but he's so low to the ground he's so good at breaking tackles and making people miss here you go, five wide receivers spread out second and nine greasy working out of the shotgun davis is one of those receivers who is spread out sharp in motion and with the empty backfield greasy throws and hits byron chamberlain the number three tight end for a first down at the 44. With Greasy playing so much on the scout team last year, Chamberlain was part of that scout team. In effect, you might say at this point anyway, Chamberlain is his favorite receiver. He's used to him. He really is. And one of the things Brian Greasy did in preseason was hit Chamberlain on a touchdown pass when Chamberlain was the fifth progression in his read. And these are the things that Mike Shanahan saw. The way to beat the Miami Dolphins is do that. Spread them out, formation them, and create mismatches. First and 10 from the 44, and now Davis, and a great play from the backside by Buckley. Terrell Buckley, the corner, smells it out, comes in from the backside and takes Terrell down in the backfield. Al, everybody in this league talks about defense and why our defense is so good. Well, the Miami Dolphins are so good defensively because of their speed. They're not very big except for their tackles inside, but you could see Terrell Buckley coming around the corner and making a play and chasing Terrell Davis down. George Hill is the defensive coordinator. How often would you see a cornerback come into the backfield and tackle a running back for a five-yard loss? Well, give credit to George Hill for calling the right defensive player. And there's Dave Wanstead, who I'm sure is helping along a little bit. The assistant head coach and the former Bear head coach. On second and 15, Greasy's pass is tipped and incomplete. Try to jam it into McCaffrey, and it'll be third down and 15. Coming into tonight, so many contrasts in this game, but here is one. You've got Marino on one side. <laughs> Take a look at that. <laughs> Almost 8,000 passes, and coming into the season, Brian had thrown three, all of them, right. of course, look, last look year. Look at that down there. Right there. Super Bowl. Already one Super Bowl. Yeah, that's, that <laughs> is really pretty, that, that, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> Greasy is three for his first five for 23 yards. Marino awaiting on the Miami sideline as Greasy tries to convert here third and long, third and 15 as he has to reach down for a bad shot. Going deep for McCaffrey who gets out in front. Beats double coverage. McCaffrey to the end zone. Touchdown. So I think Brian Greasy's probably answered all the questions, hasn't he? Oh, man. With a little help from Sean Wooden and Brock Marion, the two safeties, you saw Pat Bolin. Bob Greasy is also here, Brian's dad, and what a way to start. All you have here is one-on-one -on -one down the field, and the safeties are usually thinking that the pass rush is going to get there quicker than it did, and Brock Marion just makes a bad play and overplays Ed McCaffrey, and Brian Greasy, like a 10-year vet, stands back there and lays it out. What a great throw. Elam for the point after. And there is a flag down. The kick is momentarily good. That's Greasy. That's Bob standing up. We'll get a better shot of him shortly. That was an 84-yard drive. The amazing, an 80-yard drive. It's 80 yards. Greasy threw for 84, and they lost four on the ground. We have 12 men on the field on defense. The extra 
extra point is good. We'll penalize on the kickoff. Jimmy Johnson told us last night that he has to make the quarterback a factor and get Terrell Davis out of the game. I think if I'm Jimmy Johnson, I got to rethink the way that I'm approaching this football game. Well, the quarterback is an early factor, and it's seven. That's a nice little photo album as Greasy looks at the formations. Gary Kubiak, the offensive coordinator, and there's Bob Greasy and his wife, Shay. And, well, <laughs> we talk about a proud daddy oh, right now. Oh, boy, what a way to start for Brian Greasy. Terrific. kick off after the penalty the kick is from the 35 yard line and it's a line drive and John Avery lets it bounce through the end zone and Marino will begin his first drive at the 20. So Danny like John Elway from that brilliant class of 83 begins season number 17 and his 16th consecutive opening day start behind him in the backfield They'll start with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. We'll see J.J. Johnson, a rookie as well. Rob Conrad starts at fullback, a rookie. Martin McDuffie outside, Drayton in the tight end. Webb, Dixon, Ruddy, Gogan, a newcomer, and Brown up front. Kevin Gogan, Pro Bowl guard picked up, and he and Kevin Donnelly will each see a lot of action tonight in the interior line. Here is Abdul-Jabbar. Picking up a yard, a yard and a half. Second down, call at eight. Glenn Perez makes the tackle. The Denver defense, which shut down Miami in the playoffs last year, Tanavasa, Trailer, Price, and Williams up front. The linebackers, Mobley, Kadrez, and Romanowski. And in the secondary, Crockett and the ex-chief, Dale Carter, their big free agent pickup, Braxton and Brown, are the safety. Greg Robinson is the defensive coordinator. He did a magnificent job in postseason last year. Second and eight, the ball at the 22. The stopping already starting, and the stadium shakes. It's an erector set. Marino throws wide open as the tight end, Drayton, who puts his shoulder down, and that nets him the first down at the 31 as he runs over Braxton and Mobley. One of the hardest things to do for a quarterback in the NFL is to communicate on the road, and the Miami Dolphins offense, Miami Dolphins offense is extremely simple meaning that there aren't a lot of checks at the line of scrimmage. You have a Ph.D. in offense at quarterback, yet he's running a very simplified offense. And that's the way to run with the football. Get your shoulders down and take on the tacklers. And pick up the first down, which he does at the 31-yard line. Abdul-Jabbar, and he makes the acquaintance of one Ma'at Tanuvasa. Oh, Ma'at. Ma just comes inside of James Brown and and beats him to the punch and really this is the way this defense is built up front they're strong against the run they added Dale Carter and right there is Cecil Collins the, the rookie running back for the Miami Dolphins is missing tonight with a bad ankle here comes Kyle Vasa down inside James Brown and James Brown's got to pick him up. He can't just let him come in like that by himself. Second and 13. We showed you Collins there because Jimmy Johnson can't wait till he's healthy. He thinks he'll make a tremendous difference. And that is through a pair of hands. O.J. McDuffie and almost picked off. Al, this is the part of the game where the Dolphin offense is really going to struggle because Greg Robinson does a great job of really mixing up his defensive blitzes and he brings all different kinds of guys. And with the young, youthful running backs in the backfield, they're really not sure who to pick up in blitz pickup. And right there, he should have made the catch and lucky that it was an interception. But right here, you have Conrad and you have Avery in the backfield. These are youngsters that are not sure of who they're blocking in these situations. Can create a huge problem for the Miami Dolphins and Dan Marino. And Marino has to go to the gun with only Avery in the backfield with him. And everybody now into the pattern on third and 13. And it's almost intercepted. Darius Johnson had an easy pick. So for Miami, this night has begun with a challenge of a replay that was not sustained, costing them a timeout. They give up a touchdown on a third and long, and then Marino and the gang picked up one first down and a forced to punt. Here's Greg Robinson. You can see they have guys moving all around in the secondary, and you have to be quick in your decision-making. If you're not sure who's coming and you're not sure who you're looking at, mistakes like that happen. Brent Bartholomew is a rookie. He is the Miami punter. High kick, average distance. Fair caught by Chris Watson. 
at the 29-yard line with 8.53 left in the quarter. That's a 44-yard boot. Greasy coming back onto the field with a... A reminder, you can go to ESPN.com or NFL.com right now and try our enhanced TV during tonight's telecast. You can watch the Push Channel or pull up live stats right from our television truck. You saw John Elway there in the background saying, hey, maybe I did retire at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brian Greasy, four for six for 84 yards on the drive, and he gives the ball. Nope, he nope. fakes, and Greasy, a great ball handler, but it didn't fake Brock Marion who almost intercepted it. It's a good thing you weren't playing Tell safety. Tell me about it. That's exactly <laughs> right. He, ha he has a tendency that we watch him a lot during preseason right. on, on tape, and he will he will fool a, a few cameras well, this it, season. Well, it's the lost art of carrying out the fake after you actually hand the ball off. And when you have somebody like Terrell Davis in the backfield, what a thing to utilize. You know, the old play-action pass. I made a living off of that. Exactly. You know that, don't you? I have, absolutely. <laughs> Icky Woods and, uh, and James, James Brooks. Brooks would have had another 2,000 yards if you had given him the ball. Exactly. Second down and 10 at the 30-yard line. Now, this is Davis, who actually has the football, and he totes it out to the 34-yard line. He's cut down there by Jones. It'll be third down and five. And when you play against the Miami Dolphin defense, they are aggressive in their coverage. And you can see right there, there's John Elway's first start. Now, he was a rookie. Now, Brian Greasy is not a rookie. It's his second year. So I want to make that clarification. Right. <laughs> he was one for eight was Elway. That was against Pittsburgh, and he was yanked for Steve DeBerg. Right. <laughs> but when you play against the Miami Dolphin defense, big plays can happen because of the way that they play their coverages. A lot of man-to-man -man outside, a lot of pressure on the cornerbacks. If the quarterback has time, he can find those guys. Jimmy Johnson yesterday said we played press coverage, and that has really made the difference for us. Third down and five. Greasy throws. Caught. It is McCaffrey at the 38, but he is short of the first down, making sure he doesn't advance any farther is Jerry Wilson. Looks like Ed McCaffrey actually hurt his left leg, but you talk about accuracy in football games, and right there was an inaccurate throw, even though it was completed. You want to put the ball out in front and give the receiver a chance to make the catch and run away from the defender. But right here, the ball's a little bit behind McCaffrey, so he has to turn around, and Wilson's able to catch up and keep him from making a first down. By one yard, and now they'll punt as Terrell Buckley goes back to receive. Tom Bruin has done an outstanding job. He's been very consistent through the years here. He'll send it up into the mile-high atmosphere, but this is not a good kick. It's a wobbler that bounces at the 22. Takes a tough bounce. Buckley loses the football. It is loose at the 20-yard line. And in the middle of that scrum, no signal yet. Boy, that was an ugly pump, wasn't it? Ooh. <laughs> but it took a beautiful Denver bounce because Buckley couldn't handle it. Like a bad hop to the shortstop. Most of the time, you're... Your special teams coordinators will tell you Miami ball it's Miami ball but they will tell you that when the ball hits the ground like that get away from it Dwight Hollier actually was lucky enough to be able to pull that out from underneath the pile so Miami keeps it with 710 to go in the first quarter but the Broncos on top seven to nothing. Seven ten left in the opening quarter. Al Michaels, Boomer Esiason, and Leslie Visser in Denver. Opening night, year 30 of Monday Night Football. Seven to nothing, Bronx. As Abdul Jabbar takes the ball out to the 25-yard line. Denver's defensive unit gave up one first down to Miami on the last series, but. This play by Tanavasa stopping Abdul Jabbar, and then this near pick by Darius Johnson. The Denver defense, very tough all of last year, and they think they're a lot better this year with the addition of Dale Carter at corner. Second and six from the 24 yard line. Abdul Jabbar exploits a hole out to the 33. Tanavasa makes the tackle. Interesting, you talk about uh, guessing games with coaches and things of that nature. The Denver Broncos on second down went to their nickel defense. They took out a few linebackers, put in a few more defensive backs. Miami Dolphins open up in what looks to be a passing formation, and they run the football. So if the Dolphins can continue to do this, catch their breath, and hold back the wave, they'll have a better chance of staying in this football game. And the coolest guy in the joint at the helm. 
as he sends it back to Abdul Jabbar. A little bit of room over the left side out to the 37 yard line. Tackle there by Trevor Price. Among the things Miami is facing tonight is Mile High Stadium and the fact that Denver has now won third down on that list 24 in a row and ongoing. Miami with the all time record. 27 consecutive wins at home in 74 snapped by the Raiders. Green Bay had its 25 game streak snapped last year by Minnesota. Each of those teams had their streaks snapped on Monday Night Football. The Broncos have not lost a regular season home game since the last game of 1995. That is caught by O.J. McDuffie who led the league in receptions last year with 90 and he has a first down at the 46 tackled by Ray Crockett. Again this time the Dolphins call a play to the right. The defense is blitzing from the left. And, and really when you look at it J.J. Johnson the rookie running back made a nice block in the backfield kept the blitzer off of Dan Marino gave him the extra time that he needed just to find McDuffie right in, right in the seam of the defense. Now J.J. Johnson comes into the game a good looking rookie and Yatil Green bottom of the screen their number one pick two years ago seeing his first action after two knee surgeries. And this is the rookie J.J. Johnson, who has the same given name as the coach, James Johnson, known as J.J. He was their second-round pick out of Mississippi State. They also have Cecil Collins. Johnson wanted to upgrade the running game, and he feels he has really done it with these two guys. Take a look at this forward lane. He is 6'1", 230 pounds. He is a powerful back. Jimmy really likes him since he loves his toughness. They haven't really seen too much of him because of a hamstring injury that he that he sustained early in preseason. So we'll see a lot of him tonight. He didn't have one carry in the exhibition season. And now he already has two carries when it counts. And he takes the ball just across the 45, very close to a first down, stopped there by Kedrez. It's either a first down or third and in inches. How long have they been talking about a running game in Miami? Yeah. Forever. <laughs> Forever. And when you have somebody with the personality and the charisma of a Dan Marino, it always gets put on the back burner, it seems like. But when this man came in, Jimmy Johnson, he said, hey, look, we won all those Super Bowls in Dallas with a great running game. I had a great quarterback, but I had a great running game and a great defense, and he's trying to build this team just like he did in Dallas. All he needs is Emmett Smith. It's as simple <laughs> as that. Well, he might have found Emmett yeah. Smith either in J.J. Johnson mm -hmm. or Cecil Collins. They're going to measure, it appears, with the naked eye, to be short. And the naked eye doesn't lie. Third and that much. Johnny Greer and his crew calling the game tonight. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by the people inspired to build vehicles for your mind and heart. Nissan driven. EDS. He panic. EDS can help. The brewmasters at Budweiser remind you fresh beer tastes better. And Ameritrade the way to trade. Period. Third and inches and they give the ball to the fullback and this is Rob Conrad out of Syracuse getting the start tonight because Stanley Pritchard who normally start is hurt and Conrad who played in that same backfield with Donovan McNabb with the Orangemen last year picks up a first down on his first carry. I was talking to, uh, to uh, Abdul Jabbar before the game and I asked him about the young guys in the backfield. Is he helping them? The, how much does he have to help them? And he had said that Rob Conrad came in, picked up the offense immediately, and has been a huge surprise. Not, I don't say a surprise, but been a, a huge plus for them. And there's Stanley Pritchett, the other fullback, who's out for tonight. First down at the 44-yard line. 7-0 Denver late in the first. And Marino going deep. And it's Tony Martin hauling it in, but he was on the chalk. Incomplete. Out of bounds. Tony Martin, one of their big acquisitions. He actually started his career several years ago with Miami, then went to San Diego last year in Atlanta. Now back only one foot in on this play. The deep threat that Miami's been looking for for uh, the last few years. And you can see right here that he gets one foot down. He's got to drag that right foot. That's a, that's a receiver's responsibility to be able to do that. And Marino was under pressure and threw the ball in the face of a blitz. In college, it's good. Here at second and ten. From the 44. And this is J.J. Johnson who gets stopped by Eric Brown coming up from the safety spot. Now, anytime you see safeties and low numbers, numbers in the 20s and 30s in the backfield, that means that they're blitzing out of the secondary. And you could see that Greg Robinson likes to 
just keep moving his guys around and he and he has each of these guys about 15 blitzes when he comes into the game each of them have their own specific packages for third and second down and uh, he's really the master of just changing and deceiving the opposing offense and they told Eric to get up there and Eric said I know JJ Johnson I played with him at Mississippi State <laughs> and he made the tackle it's third down and 10 at the 44 yard line four man rush and that's dropped over the middle by the third down back, John Avery. It would have been well shy of the first down anyway. That's known as fourth down. That's known as alligator arms in the business. You have to catch the ball. It's going to hurt either way. It's not an easy catch to make. It's certainly when you know that you're surrounded by Broncos, but Avery has got to make that play. And who'd know better about alligator arms than a team from Florida? That's exactly right, but he's got to make that catch right there. He's got to concentrate on the football and just absorb the hit. It's going to hurt either way. You might as well make it count. Fred Bartholomew, Ohio State rookie. He'll try to angle this kick. At least he lined up that way. And uh, he couldn't angle it enough as it bounces into the end zone. And Denver will take it at the 20. A minute 54 left. First quarter. Opening night in Denver. Well, it's a uh, John Elway celebration week. And he'll be on it, of course, at halftime on Saturday. A college football celebration on ABC. North Carolina State against number one ranked Florida State to most of the country at 3.30 Eastern time and other regional action, including Kansas against the Colorado Buffaloes about 35 miles from here. Ohio versus Ohio that is State. Correct. The old Ohio U as Greasy goes deep on first down and incomplete intended for Dwayne Carswell. Covered by Calvin Jackson, so they send uh, the tight end slash wide receiver down deep and Bubby Brister on the sideline. Ten days ago, we thought he'd be here tonight as the starting quarterback. He's the backup. You want to talk about running backs in this league, and you want to see what it takes to be a great running back? Not only rushing the football, but you have to be able to block. And watch Terrell Davis pick up Zach Thomas. And that's the way to block right there. Knock the guy out of the way. Keep him off your quarterback. Second down and ten. And this is Davis. A flag goes down. On their first 12 plays, I mean, Shanahan not letting Greasy really get his feet wet in, in the conventional sense they passed on nine of their first 12 balls tonight now every every coach should coach the quarterback the way this guy does he wants his quarterback to get in a rhythm he doesn't want him to have to sit back there on third down and throw it only on third down offside 92 defense lined up in the neutral zone still second down Daryl Gardner they, they want to let he wants to let the quarterback Throw the football and get in and get in the flow of the game. Well, a quarterback throwing the football. How about the AFC Championship game in Cleveland in 86, simply known as the drive. It was John Elway sending the Broncos to the Super Bowl with that magnificent drive against Cleveland, an overtime victory. Second down and five. And this is Davis swinging to the outside, gets spun around, helicoptered, and may have picked up the first down. Calvin Jackson makes the hit. Oh. That was some hit too for DB to come up and lay the and, and lay the wood to Terrell that way. That was some kind of you can see right here he's walking off. He's a little banged up, a little hurt, and Sean Wooden's going to come in and replace him. And this is a uh, this is this is a secondary that is asked to make tackles. That's a first down. Look at where Davis stands through their first 61 NFL games. Only Dickerson and Campbell got off to more illustrious starts than Davis at similar points in their career. That's taken out to the 35-yard line. Sometimes you can look at a, a total careers, and right now, Davis is ahead of a lot of people, but remember, as running backs wear down, their averages begin to diminish at the end, so the best way to really compare these running backs is at similar points in their career, and you can see right now, through, in effect, four years, Davis is off to the third best start ever by a running back. And he doesn't get hit in practice. Mike Shanahan told us we don't hit him during the week. He gets hit enough on Sundays. We want to make sure that he's fresh at the end of the season as well as the beginning. Second down and four. Play fake and then Greasy throws underneath but throws low intended for Davis and at his feet Kenny Nixon put the pressure on. Well these are some of the bumps that he's going to run into. Not every pass is going to be completed and you can see a flag is on the on the play on this one as well. Deep illegal contact against Miami. Illegal hands to the face. 
Number 29, defense, first down. Sam Madison, who oh, so Jimmy Johnson calls the best cornerback he's ever seen. He had a terrific year last year, and just watch. This is what it's like to be a physical DB in the NFL. You can't grab the face mask, certainly like that, and throw a guy down on the ground. I'm surprised that wasn't a 15-yarder. Let me put it this way. Jimmy actually said, first, best cornerback I've ever had. He said, remember, I didn't have Dion in Dallas. A little bit of a mix-up on the substitutions in the Denver sideline. We're trying to get Brian's attention to call timeout. Would have been an illegal substitution had they not called timeout. And a very, but a waste of timeout here coming with five seconds left in the period. But what you're going to do? Here's a reminder on Sunday, September 26th, from the creator of the practice, Natalie McBeal. Come the private eyes that'll get you the series premiere of Snoops right before the practice on ABC. Boy, that looks David pretty Kelly good, Al. Show. Big night for David at the <laughs> Emmys last night. Yes, so you and I will be watching that. It on looks pretty good, Al. September 26th. Final play of the quarter is Terrell Davis on first down, taking it to the 46-yard line, and that's the way the period will end as the greasy era begins. And it begins effectively. Denver 7, Miami nothing. And Monday... For the latest on where to go and what to do, call the 9 Family Connection helpline. Opening night, Mile High Stadium in Denver. The two-time Super Bowl champion Broncos leading Miami 7 to nothing as we start the second quarter. Second down and five for Denver from its own 46. We see good protection throws. Picks up the first down as Shannon Sharp makes his second catch of the evening. Is out of bounds at the 44 off a nice block by Terrell Davis to spring him again again really the the Dolphins blitz Brian Greasy stands right in there and all the stuff is going on around him he waits for Shannon Sharp to clear underneath hits him on a little shallow cross Shannon has great hands and what Shannon does so well after the catch of the ball is run with it and gain extra yards and then he delivers a lick he just doesn't take one Sharp coming over to the sideline and now comes back in. <laughs> Set up tight on the left side. And they give it to Davis, trying to shave off the backside, but not much there to the 43 yard line. <laughs> the, the other thing with a young quarterback is the communication, making sure that guys are in the huddle that are supposed to be in the huddle, getting the formations correct on the field. We saw early in the preseason that some of the formations early in games for the Denver Broncos, they were not in the correct formation. These are things that young quarterbacks have to be able to do, and it's nice that he gets a chance to do it at home. Marino biding his time, second down and nine with the ball at the 44-yard line. And Greasy's pass is caught at the 38. Shannon Sharp, he reminds me in so many ways, the poise, just the look. I mean, he's so clear-eyed, speaking to him yesterday. Extremely intelligent, the, the, the tests that all of the rookies are given. I mean, he was the valedictorian of, of, of the Wonderlick, what they call the Wonderlick test. Well, the average score there is between 15 and 20 for an average NFL player. For a smart quarterback, it would be 28. 39 is off the charts. Mm. And really, and in this game, so much of it is mental for the quarterback to be able to handle and put things in the right perspective. Third and three, the 24-year-old quarterback will keep it himself on a quarterback draw and picks up the first down to the 33-yard line. The crowd Papa. And Bob's wife, Shay, is applauding. He's very happy. Shay is Bob's second wife. Brian's mother, Judy, died in 1988. She battled cancer for a long time. Brian is the youngest of three sons. And he and his dad are, I can't tell you how close. But there he is picking up the first down. One of the interesting things there, you can see number 77, Tony Jones, the left tackle for the Denver Broncos, engulfing Zach Thomas. That's the key to the defense of the Miami Dolphins. Get somebody on him. Good play fake again. Then he gets banged from behind, loses the ball, but his arm was coming forward. It's an incomplete pass. Sam Madison on the corner blitz. Well, it seems to me that the Miami Dolphins have decided, look, we have to turn up the heat. We're not getting there with all with our four defensive linemen we're going to have to start sending some defensive backs and some linebackers and on a play action pass like that Brian Greasy had no chance to see that the blitz was coming and watch Sam Madison down here at the bottom kind of olays the, the running back Howard Griffith and that's not like Howard Griffith Howard Griffith usually makes blocks like that but 
different blocking and nimble defensive back coming around the corner. Second down and 10 from the 33-yard line, and they give it to Davis. And Terrell fights his way to the 25-yard line. Tom Nail in the center leading the way. That's the key, getting somebody on Zach Thomas. And Tom Nail in number 66 coming right up the middle and taking on Zach Thomas and running him over. Zach Thomas, one of the best tacklers in the NFL. He had 489 tackles over the last three seasons. He is the heart and soul of the Miami Dolphin defense. And Tom Nalen just ran him over and gave Terrell Davis a great hole to run up through. Third and one. Denver with a huge advantage on 104 yards through the air. 84 in that very first series that resulted in the game's only touchdown. On third and short, Davis swings to the outside, and good work by the right side of the Miami defense. Daryl Gardner helping to break up the play. He was the key man. What a play by Daryl Gardner, staying low and staying underneath the blocks and fighting his way through and throwing his body at the legs of Terrell Davis. And somebody at 6'6", 315 is coming at you. <laughs> That's a load. Two great tackles in the middle. His partner in crime, Tim Bowens, is the only Dolphin to have been named to the Pro Bowl last year. Now Elam to attempt a 44-yard field goal. We see the hold, and Tom ruined the hold, and it is blocked, it is blocked, it is plucked out of the air, and it is Buckley skirting the sideline and staying in as long as he can and taking it all the way to the 36-yard line. Lorenzo Bromel is the guy who blocked it to the disgust of special teams coach Rick Dennison. That doesn't happen very often to Elam. And then Buckley runs it back, and Miami is in business with 10.53 left in the half. Buckley with a run back, and Marino taking over at the Denver 36. You can see right here, Trey Teague, number 70. He is the center for the kicking team. Gets ran over by about 1,200 pounds of beef, and Lorenzo Bromel gets his big paw in the air and knocks it down. The center has got to anchor in there, and he's got to stay tight and strong. So instead of probably 10 to nothing, it is still 7 nothing, and Miami has it at the 36. Abdul Jabbar back in the backfield. The fake to him. And then the pass to Abdul Jabbar. He gets rolled down at the 29 yard line. A nice tackle by John Mobley. One of the more difficult things to do for linebackers is to, to trap a, de uh, a running back out in the in the field of play with nobody else around. And Mobley is known as one of the better tackles also in the NFL. Quick. Watch the bar get around the corner here and watch Mobley wrap him up. It's a good solid tackle and it's exactly the way he's supposed to do it. Second down and three at the 29 yard line. Marino throwing into a lot of traffic and somehow, some way, guns it into O.J. McDuffie, turning around, reaching back, and making a fabulous catch just shy of the goal line. Talk about catching a break, throwing the ball, and McDuffie going up and making the play. This is what it's all about, going up, being tough, getting your body in front of the defenders and making a play. And Dan Marino fires the football in there, but look at McDuffie go up and make the play with two guys around him. Braxton and Dale Carter. First and goal at the one. Abdul Jabbar, no. This is this is the problem for Miami. It has been in the past this short yardage situation because they need that back who can take it in. You better have somebody can block too. I mean, right. I don't care who you are. You're not going to break five tackles. There were there were four or five defenders right there at the point of attack. And you could see Trailer just coming over the top. And I, mean, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Terrell Davis. You're not getting through there. Second and goal. Conrad's the fullback. Abdul Jabbar is the tailback. Abdul Jabbar again, and he angles his way in for the touchdown. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He only wears that Abdul on the back. He has the same name as the basketball player, even though the first name is different. Part of a marketing settlement in a suit filed by the basketball Kareem a few years ago. That's why it simply says Abdul. Right now, he says six points. When you think about it, this game is all about just making plays. First, Lorenzo Bromel, then O.J. McDuffie, and now Jabbar right over the top and into the end zone. 
Three plays, the score is tied. The game can change in, on a moment's notice. And it did on the block the field goal, which results in a Miami touchdown, an extra point by Mate to tie the game. So instead of it being probably 10 to nothing Denver, we have 8.54 left in the opening half. It's Miami 7, Denver 7. Well, the Miami Dolphins blocking a field goal attempt. That's the key play of the game. Denver scored early on its first series. Brian Greasy hitting Ed McCaffrey with a long bomb. And then after it looked like it would be 10 to nothing, Denver, Miami gets the ball. This kickoff winds up in the end zone down there by Chris Watson. And now Greasy will come back out to the 20-yard line. In the meantime, we're counting down to the half, which is going to be a halftime to remember here in Denver. They're all pumped up. John Elway to get his... Home. Online is inside the game with live action, interviews, and live polls at ESPN.com. <laughs> part of the tribute at halftime, all of those kids in John Elway's uniform, part of the... The celebration that takes place on the field, watching this game unfold as on first down from the 20, Greasy rolling, buying time, throwing and finding McCaffrey, who gets free on the sideline. McCaffrey pulls it in up at the 40-yard line, a 20-yard pickup. So here you go. You see you have an athlete back there. He's moving the ball and throwing the ball on the run. And this is a very propitious time to go down to Leslie Vista. Leslie. Yes, it is, Al. They've said that Brian may not be the next Elway, but he might be the next Greasy. I'm joined by our colleague Bob tonight. What impresses you as a father and an analyst? Well, these are my two favorite teams, you know, <laughs> Dolphins for over 30 years and for the Broncos over one. I couldn't get any information out of either one of them. <laughs> but Brian, I'm, you know, it just just this calmness, just the fact that he's uh, he's doing so well. He's, he, I think he would tell you he's a little off on some of the crossing routes. He's throwing the ball a little behind. But he's, but uh, he's playing well for the first time on Monday night in front of the, uh, which I think is the best defense in the NFL, the Dolphins. He's doing well. Well, you would know. What advantages does he have that you did not have as a 22-year-old starter? Mike Shanahan <laughs> and a great running game. <laughs> I was with an expansion team. We didn't have this. But also can't hurt to have a Hall of Fame father. Thanks yeah, a lot, Bob. He's a good team, guys. Thank you, Leslie. <laughs> good analysis. I mean, Bob did everything but send it back to Keith Jackson. <laughs> Greasy throws, and that is incomplete. Sharp is looking for a flag, saying that he was wrapped up by Brock Marion, but there is no laundry. These are the problems that the Denver Broncos give you when you line up in spread formations like this. Shannon Sharp is very difficult to cover for a, for a safety, let alone a, a defensive back. And you can see right here Brock Marion making a nice play on the ball. It was close, but the official, I think, did the right thing by not throwing the flag. But those are the problems that the Denver Broncos give you in formations and matchups, especially when they spread out like that. Third down and six now. As Greasy comes up in the shotgun. It's Rod Smith in the slot. Uh oh. Under a lot of heat, throws, hits sharp, but it's short of the first down. It's a minimal game. That time it was Zach Thomas who broke free and agreed, made Greasy get rid of the ball in a hurry. Fourth down. He broke free because Tony Jones and Terrell Davis got mixed up. They both went for the same guy outside and let Zach Thomas come right up the middle untouched. And Terrell Davis looked at Tony Jones and said, hey, you got the guy going inside. I got the guy going outside. Tony Jones made the wrong, the wrong move, and, and Brian Greasy had to pay the price. Tom Ruin, who is engaged to the Olympic swim champion, Amy Van Dyken, who hopes to win several more medals in Sydney, and they'll get married after the Olympics, is back to punt. And O.J. McDuffie will run it back for Miami if indeed there is a run back, but there won't be because it's eight yards into the end zone. A 54-yard boot with 6.46 left in the half. And the game tied at seven. No out on the last play. Brian Greasy took a hit right here. Tony Jones and Terrell Davis both go outside when one should stay inside. And it should be Terrell Davis or Jones picking up Zach Thomas. I believe that was Jones's man coming in. He went outside with Terrell and forced Brian Greasy to throw the ball quickly. J.J. Johnson is in the backfield from the 20-yard line. And the rookie with the ball out to the 25-yard line. Boomer, we touched upon it at the top. Jimmy Johnson 
after three years in Miami, and it's the only job that would have brought him back after his sabbatical in television following five years with Dallas, that one day he not only had called for a press conference, he'd almost emptied out his office. They sent seven box into the trunk of his car, and then Wayne Heisinger, the owner, flew back to Miami and talked him out of it. Well, he had a little bit of a midlife crisis. His mom passed away, he had some personal problems, and I, I guess Wayne Heisinger, but also Danny Marino. And they said, hey, look, we're close. Let's stay together. Let's keep going. To the 29-yard line, that's Johnson. And Jimmy was the one who had said that uh, he had a five-year plan. And, th and this team is close. And with the uh, the New York Jets losing Vinny Testaverde yesterday, right? Uh, you know, and, and the, the Patriots picking up a big win. Buffalo they losing. Right. They, they smell blood in their division. There's no question about that. And coming into tonight, I sense from Jimmy Johnson all the way down to Alindo Mare, their kicker, that they could win this football game. They sense that they're the team to beat now. Well, Johnson's attempting to become the first man, the first coach to win Super Bowls with two different teams. Third down and short from the 29-yard line. Marino, a little dump off to Conrad. Nice looking play, and the rookie makes the catch. Crockett makes the tackle, first down. Those, the four on the left, of course, uh, Lombardi, McCafferty, Stram, and Flores won Super Bowls and then couldn't get their second teams to the Super Bowl. Johnson, Parcells, Ditka, Holmgren, and Seifert would have that opportunity. In fact, Bill Parcells has taken two different teams to the Super Bowl, winning twice with the Giants, losing with New England. The only other guy to go to Super Bowls with two different teams would have been Don Shula, winning in Miami twice but losing with Baltimore. Moreno throws, and it is hauled in by Tony Martin. Oh, Martin, the primary acquisition in the offseason. Again, he started his career with Miami, went to San Diego last year with Atlanta. The Falcons couldn't step up and pay him the money they needed to because his questionable future, his future was in doubt. We'll get to that in a second. But right, yards. but right here, recognizing that Tony Martin's on a rookie, or a rookie is trying to cover him, number 21, Chris Watson. And Tony Martin trying to keep Watson away from the football gets on top of Watson. And Watson not used to playing against athletes like this, even though he doesn't practice, but not when the bullets are flying for real out here. 40 yard pickup to the 25 yard line. Johnson gained six. Tony Martin was a guy that had to be picked up by Johnson. Uh, curiously, Tony was involved. He had, there were five counts against him, mainly dealing with money laundering and a drug transaction with a boyhood friend, but he was acquitted on all five counts recently, so now he's free and clear and adopted. And you can tell a veteran move, a veteran move by an, an offense coordinator, Kippy Brown, going right after the rookie, Chris Watson, and staying away from Dale Carter. So down and three from the 18-yard line. This will be the 8,000th pass of Marino's career. Consider it complete. Caught by Yatiel Green. So Danny's 8,000th attempt is Yatiel Green's first ever reception. Now in his third year, but he was hurt in the first two years. And finally is able to see some action. Hurt in training camp in each of the last two seasons. Sunday night on ESPN, it will be the New York Jets and Rick Meyer at the helm against the Buffalo Bills. Two teams trying to get on track after yesterday's performances and then we go to Dallas where it's Atlanta against the Cowboys coming off that remarkable comeback over the Redskins yesterday on Monday Night Football. First 10 is Reno hitting Conrad wide open in the town for the rookie. And another mix up in the defensive secondary for the Denver Broncos. John Mobley standing out there looking confused wondering whether or not he was responsible for Conrad and Give the Miami Dolphins credit for hanging in there and running plays and running play action passes. And Dan Marino, the, the savvy veteran, standing back there finding guys wide open. And you can see that he's looking downfield and then quickly adjusts his sights and Mobley gets twisted inside, confused, and probably was looking for the run. Body for the point after. You can see uh, Shanahan and Robinson and Mike uh, in effect saying, what in the world was that coverage? What happened on that one? So Yatiel Green helps to set it up. Conrad scores his first NFL touchdown and their first lead. What will happen at coverage? Well, he's looking at him and he's wondering, you, you're of course in the backfield and you, and you bid on the play action fake and your responsibility is the fullback in the flat. You have to go with him. Danny Marino can sense things. The, the great things about, the great thing about veteran quarterbacks, Al, is that they can see the entire field and they can sense 
when somebody's open, and certainly he's done it better than anybody ever has. When those photos come down after coverage like that to the guy uh, getting yelled at, they must look like they're X-rated. Bouncing ball fielded at the five-yard line. The great-looking rookie Chris Watson up to the 27. Won a job running back punts and kickoffs. He'll also be a nickelback, and now Greasy comes out again. Take a look at this play right here. It's his last play, touchdown play. Watch Conrad. He's in the flat. And Mobley is disjointed. He kind of gets lost, looking in the backfield on the on the, on the. And I don't know why he's looking back there. There were there wasn't there wasn't ever a, a play action fake, and you can see right there, they all look confused. The rookie in effect beats the guy with the pro. Right. There's no excuse for him to be wide open like that. Somebody bust coverage. You know, my guess would be Mobley. First down from the 27-yard line. And that pass is off the fingertips of Howard Griffith, covered by Robert Jones. Well, you talked about the Sunday night ESPN game with the Jets and the, and the uh, Buffalo Bills. Uh, the NFL is crazy the way it works. After the first week, already panic is set in. And, uh, these games mean so much to each of these players and coaches and the fans across the league that when teams lose, well, I'll tell you, the stress levels rise, the head coaches get ornery, and that's going to be a game that both of those teams are going to want very badly. Second down and 10. From the 28-yard line. And that's about as good a coverage on a receiver as you'll ever see without a flag. That is Rod Smith, and he is hurt. He is shaken as he's rolling around on the ground. Coverage that time. Sam Madison, I mean, you know, it's the old cliche blanket coverage. Madison was a $1,000 quilt on that one. This is the way to play defense when you go back down there and there's going to be some bumping and there's going to be some contact, but Sam Madison played the ball correctly and played the receiver correctly. Watch this. Good thing about Sam Madison here is looking for the ball. He's looking to make a play on the football and then, and then actually gets right there when the ball also gets there. So there is no penalties associated with that. Looked like he grabbed his face mask, though, didn't it, Al? Mm -hmm. Got away with that one. And now they have to work on Rod Smith, who has been one of their primary guys. So we talked about Madison and the fact that Jimmy Johnson says that he's the, the finest cornerback he's ever seen. In the meantime, if there's a five-yard penalty against Miami, that will make it a first down for the Broncos at the 33. But Smith, a key, a key guy. They've got three great receivers, and, and Smith... Caffrey and Shannon Sharp. And uh, beyond them, you've got Marcus Nash and Chris Doring. It's the one thing that you could never really expect, and that's the injury. When does the injury hit your team? And for teams like the New York Jets, you can see right here, first undrafted receiver with consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. It's a pretty nice accomplishment for Rod Smith. You talk, you talk about injuries. You, you just never know when they're going to hit. You never know who they're going to hit. You Number just, 62, offense. Still first down. You, you just hope and pray that it, it doesn't happen to your football team, and it's not key players like Wayne Corbett and Vinny Testaverde. Right on opening day, and it's going to be the Rams of Michigan. Oh, yeah. Yesterday is the Rams before the move. Sometimes it, it works out, other times uh, it's a nightmare of season. To the 29, that's Davis for two. Elway, to be honored at the half, here's what Brian Greasy says about the legend. I came in as a rookie, and, and uh, my locker was put right next to his, uh, and I was kind of, uh, you know, uh, awestruck for a while, but as I got to know him more and more, and I got to be able to kid with him about things, I, I really started to watch the way that he led the football team. Best way to learn. Boy, I mean, think about that. How about that for, for a couple of mentors? Shanahan and Elway, clock ticking down to the two-minute warning, and, of course, the crowd is bracing for what will be a very memorable ceremony with John Elway on. That's pretty even when you look at those numbers and the back parrot through the first 28 minutes action. Little difference in experience. Greasy making his first start, and... Danny making his over 200th start, over 230. 
As Greasy on second down and 14. It's flushed out, throws, and almost jams it in. It's incomplete. And Late have, flag. And you're going to have holding against the offensive line of the Denver Broncos. You know, Trace Armstrong right here really has a matchup in his favor. He's going against Matt Lepsis, the right tackle of the Denver Broncos. And, and, and Trace should be able to handle him pretty good on, on passing plays. And, and this is an area where, talking to Dave Wanstead before the game. 69 offense. It's declined. Third down. Where they felt that they had an, they had an advantage. And uh, you have an 11-year veteran going against a, a first-year starter. Somehow the clock only ticked off one second. I guess time is standing still at <laughs> 5,280 feet. Now they're going to reset it. Yeah. They did. Thank you. But this is the maturation of a young quarterback. How he's going through some pitfalls right now. The last few series haven't gone so well. He's been getting hit. A few penalties here and there. This is a tough play right here. Third down and long. Third and 14. And here comes the blitz. Third and long. He threw the touchdown pass earlier, and he's got McCaffrey free again, and he underthrows it. McCaffrey had beaten the corner, Madison, but the pass floated, and it had to slow down. And that's the end of that. Well, when you're used to playing with John Elway, who's got a cannon and can throw it about 80 yards, and you get out on top of everybody like that, you expect your quarterback to reach you. And that time, Ryan Greasy under threw the ball, but Ed McCaffrey should still make this catch. Tries to put everything he can into it. And that's a catch he normally makes. Now Ruin has the punt blocked. The punt is blocked, and the two big plays have been Miami blocked so far tonight because that one's going to roll dead up at the 43-yard line where it is Greg Jeffries who blocks the kick. And then it is picked up by Byron Chamberlain. It is with Dennison shakes his head Miami ball at the 44 yard line. Again Miami has found a hole up the middle of the Denver protection. That's where they came again this time. If after the block a Miami player had had possession of the ball and lost it and Denver had come up with it as Chamberlain did there. That's what moment can do the field. That, that, that was not, not, not the case because it went past the line of scrimmage right. which made like any other punt. And so Miami is smart enough to know don't touch the ball. And Mobley is smart enough to know to try to knock a guy into the ball. He did. He tried to he get, almost got away with it. From the 43-yard line, Marino fires wide open over the middle. Is Tony Martin. And he has the first down at the 27-yard line, tackled by Ray Crockett. As Marino moves to the line quickly, Monday Night Football is brought to you by Ford Outfitters, no batteries. Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up, never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. And for love of the game from Universal Pictures, starring Kevin Costner and Kelly Preston. What I like about here, the Dolphins actually went back into their huddle. He's in no hurry, does not want to leave any time on the clock for the Denver offense if, in fact, he does get an opportunity to score. Playing both ends against the middle. Oh. And this is Abdul Jabbar to the 15 yard line off a of Rob Conrad block. So the rookie fullback, who has already caught a touchdown pass, makes the start. The kid out of Syracuse wearing the same number at Syracuse 44, worn by Jim Brown, Ernie Davis, and Floyd Little with a great block. Jim, Jimmy Johnson loves Rob Conrad. Watch him come around. This is what fullbacks do they take on linebackers, knock them out of the way. And Jabbar is smart enough to get through the hole quickly. First and 10, ball at the 15-yard line. Marino throws to the outside. That's incomplete. Miami has two timeouts at its disposal. Their other timeout was the timeout off the replay challenge very early in the game, which was not upheld, unless they're down to two. I'll tell you why that last play was a good play by Dan Marino. Most young quarterbacks will sit in there and they'll try to look around and force it. Marino was not comfortable with the coverage. He didn't feel good about it. He knew where he was on the field. He got rid of it and didn't, didn't risk taking a sack. Marino with 12 interceptions in the red zone. And that's probably why he's like that now. Yes. He's probably a little gun shy. Second down and 10. Danny hangs in and the pass is incomplete. There's a flag down at the six yard line. You're going to have holding on the defense. It's like probably it could be Mobley holding on Drayton. 
So Mobley, we assume, got burned on that last coverage with Conrad. Now Holding. winds up holding the tight end. 51, defense. First down. I saw that graphic about Danny Marino throwing the ball in the red zone like that. That's one of the reasons that Jimmy Johnson does not want to throw the ball as much. You'll see right here on the left side of our screen, there's Drayton, and you'll see Mobley grabbing him right there. And Danny Marino recognizing it and throwing it and getting the flag. 21 ticks remaining. First down goal from the 10 yard line. Good protection into the end zone. Great coverage there. Looks for McDuffie, but a bunch of Broncos around him. Tyrone Braxton with the primary coverage. Dale Carter there as well. No, everybody was over there. They have two receivers running into the end zone, and there are about seven guys. <laughs> Get somebody on the other side. It's the ultimate force. And Denver probably will not blitz down here. They'll probably play zone defense, and they'll try to keep the ball in front of them. And it really comes down to the defensive lineman of the Denver Broncos to get back there and put pressure on the quarterback. Now Marino spreads it out on second and goal. And Danny throws it away, so everybody covered. And then Johnny Greer throws a flag, the referee. Aye. And because, because he was in the pocket, he was in the pocket, you can't do that. Your pocket, you can do it. I, I gotta, I've never seen. I understand the rule. Right. Most, most officials will not call that. In Boomer, what you say is illustrated in space. Marino's laughing about it. I'm sure he's saying right. the he same thing. Come on, I, I could do this. I'm not under pressure. Nobody's near me. Let's take a look here. You see, there's only a three-man rush by the Broncos, so there are eight guys in the secondary, and that. Yeah. I it, mean, I, I mean, it, if you interpret the rule the way literally, then okay, I can understand the call, but. Right. I don't ever remember that happening to me. Right. Very uh, <laughs> unbelievable. You know, it's, it's one of those plays where the rule says if you're outside what they call the tackle box. In other words, right. outside where the tackles would normally stand. Right. You can throw it away. But Danny's straight behind center and threw it off the goalpost. If he, if he didn't throw it quite as high, I don't think he would have called it. Meantime, it's there was no intent to, to make the completion there. Right. Third down and goal from the 20-yard line. Marino under pressure, avoids the sack, throws back to the end zone, and it is no touchdown. Drayton was on the chalk. We we'll have a flag down in the end zone right here. Drayton pulled it in, but on the back line. That, of course, would is, that's the type of play that's reviewable. I think this one's clearly out. There was a flag, however, there though. There's no the infraction play. on the play. Fourth down. Fourth down. He's clearly, he's out as we'll look at the replay, so there'll right. be no stoppage by the replay booth. It's up to the replay booth here. This is not a coach's challenge situation. And he doesn't get either foot in. So there's Not even close. Not even close is exactly right. The coaches cannot call for the replay in the last two minutes. It's up to the replay people. Replay official. This is a 38-yard field goal attempt. Olindo Mate, Damon Ewer to hold from 38 in the thin air. And Mate's kick is good. So two key plays tonight for Miami. One, a blocked field goal by Bromel. The other, the partially blocked punt, helping lead to a field goal. So that has set up 10 of Miami's 17 points, and Jimmy Johnson's team is up by 10. And what is his recipe for success? Solid defense, good running game, and outstanding, outstanding special teams. He's one of the few coaches where everybody pre preaches it, but he is fully out there with his special teams, making sure that they know what their assignments are. And that's exactly what you have to do on the road. You have to go out and you have to make the plays on special teams to give your team an opportunity to win. That's a three-year home winning streak in regular season, and only in only two of the games have they trailed at the half. Both in 1996, so they went through 97 and 98 without even trailing at the half in Mile High. Well, give the Miami Dolphins an awful lot of credit, especially their defense. After that first series, they kind of settled down and took it to Brian Greasy in the offense of the Denver Broncos and the offense was you know made some mistakes made some blocking errors dropped some balls 
you know, those are the plays that you make. If you want to go to the Super Bowl, you got to make the great catches, you got to pick up your assignments, and you have to make sure that you're error free. And that's not the way the Broncos have played since that first series on offense. This is a little ground ball, and it will end the first half. Etron Smith. Back out to the 37-yard line. Miami was 17 unanswered points all in the second quarter. Boys are getting a little testy. <laughs> well, Denver took the early lead on the first series, and the place erupted. The place will erupt in another few minutes with the Elway ceremony, but right now Miami leads the field on top 17-7. to Lexus halftime report, the John Elway retirement ceremony, when we come back after this message from the National Football League and a word from our ABC stations. Building lighted in tribute to number seven, and I'm thinking about Pat Boland. Pat Boland saying seven and John Elway are synonymous. Denver and all of Colorado and John Elway are synonymous. I can I can only think of one other athlete in modern time, Michael Jordan, how so you caught, and that's the way they feel Elway. Listening to a radio show today, question posed, what's a trip to the John Elway? Somebody said, let's name the street after him. Okay. Somebody else said, let's name the new stadium after him. Not a bad idea. And somebody else said, why stop there? Let's name a mountain after him. He was a mountain of a man and comported himself from beginning to end, from high school through college and the professional ranks with class and dignity. And the only thing you can wrap it up with is the old Bob Hope line to John Elway. Thanks for the memories. What a career. We'll be back to kick off the second half after this. Mile High Stadium in Denver as we get set to start the second half and the smoke still clearing literally from the, the fireworks. Haze in the thin air. And right now there's a little pull in the air as well because Miami leads by... 10. Elam's kick. This is John Avery running it back from the two. Good run back. He takes it all the way out to the 35 yard line, picking and threading his way for a 33 yard return. As we take a look, Boomer, at the numbers through the first 30 minutes of competition. Give the Dolphins credit. They hung in there after a really inauspicious start in the first quarter, but as you can see right now, literally outplayed the Denver Broncos. And the key stat right there is no turnovers. That's it. Denver led 7-0 early. Miami with 17 unanswered points in the second quarter. First down from the 35-yard line. And Marino to Conrad, who scored a touchdown. In the first half, and Conrad, I mean, everybody who oh. wears 44 looks like Tom Rathman or Tommy Vardell. Or how about John Riggins? Down, or John Riggins. Yes. Really, the nice thing about Conrad, they're breaking two tackles, first Mobley and then Quadrez. And you can see this kid has got good hands. He's big, he's solid, he makes good blocks, and certainly can run after the catch. To have a fullback that is multidimensional like that is what a big plus for the Miami Dolphins. Johnny Greer is the referee. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, yeah. number 65, offense. Go first down. That's Kevin Donnelly, the guard. Now, he and Kevin Gogan will be spelled this year coming in and out. Both are veterans. Gogan in his 13th year, Donnelly in his ninth, and Johnson trying to keep them fresh, and Donnelly was too fresh there. Now, the one, the one thing, really, that the Miami Dolphins didn't do, especially in the second quarter, they no big penalties, no turnovers. They come out, they get a nice start right here, and then have a stupid penalty like that. These are the things that lead you into defeat on the road, especially against the Broncos. First and 17 from the 28-yard line. Abdul-Jabbar. Out to the 34. Tackled by Mike Lodish. Let's check in with Leslie Visser. Leslie. Uh, Al, Jimmy Johnson said he is most impressed that they stayed with the running game. You'll remember they rushed for only 50 yards in two games against the Broncos last year. For the Broncos, 20 million people around the world saw John Elway's number retired, but not the Broncos. They were in the locker room making adjustments. Mike Shanahan said it's their defense that has to step up, but he laments that John Elway will not be available to them in the fourth <laughs> yes. quarter. Well, and maybe Brian Grease is to Leslie will be lamenting the fact that 20 million people are watching. If that's the case, that'll be about half the rating we expect second and 11 and that pass is caught by martin who breaks the tackle picks up the first down 
into Denver territory, and Tony is out of bounds at the 41. He broke a Chris Watson tackle, and there's a flag thrown after the play. You talked about Chris Watson earlier on, Al, and, and what a fine-looking rookie. Well, he's getting schooled tonight. First, Tony Martin down the other side right now, then they're breaking a tackle. Personal foul, number 39, defense. Late hit out of bounds. First down. Oh. Take a look at this. There's a blitz, so it's one-on-one -on -one outside. Watson has got to make the tackle. Martin hey, is having a tough night tonight. They're so impressed with his... Oh, you can see right there, Crockett at the end, throwing an elbow. I mean, Super Bowl contenders don't do that. What is he thinking? Yeah, that, that's, that's on the edge of an ejection. First and 10 at the 26-yard line. Abdul-Jabbar. And he's running with a lot more panache tonight because what's happening, of course, is that he's fighting for a job. He's the incumbent, but he has two rookies behind him, and Johnson loves the rookies, and he's looking for any reason to supplant Abdul-Jabbar. Go look, to the penalty now. Yeah, take a look right here. There's Martin. He's got the face mask, and he's obviously very annoyed with that and then takes exception of it with it and throws an elbow. Ooh. Second and one, so Tony got away with one, and then Crockett gets the penalty as Conrad picks up the first down oh, of the 11. How good does Conrad look? Fullback lifting up his legs, picking up his feet, getting through the piles, catching balls, making, making blocks. Hmm. That's a real fine for the Miami Dolphins if this kid can keep it up through the full season. And there is Cecil Collins, the fifth round draft choice. Jimmy Johnson loves this kid. He loves his spirit. He loves the way he plays. But I think he's finding a little bit more out about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar tonight. Yes, he is. First down from the 12, Abdul-Jabbar. And hmm. Abdul-Jabbar saying, uh, not, you're not getting my job that quickly to either of the rookies as Braxton stops him. Every coach in the NFL will tell you that it's all about the competition that brings out the best in players. One of the things that I had read locally here in, in Denver, Reggie Rivers wrote an article about Bubby Brister and how Bubby really didn't think he was competing for a spot on the team. He figured he was the starter. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, on the other hand, knows that he's competing because he's got all these young guys behind him, J.J. Johnson, John Avery, and Cecil Collins, who all want his job. So he is playing at a very high motivation level. And he's averaging almost five yards a carry tonight. There it is. He gets it again, and comes up just a little bit short of the goal line tackled by Bill Romanowski players in the NFL need to be uncomfortable and coaches like Jimmy Johnson Mike Shanahan Bill Parcells Dan Reeves I mean the list is, is long they keep their players uncomfortable and you could see that Kareem is giving it his all tonight laying all on the line and showing Jimmy Johnson hey I can be your man but right now, J.J. Johnson's going to be the man because he comes in as the tailback in this set behind Conrad on second and goal. They give it to the rookie, oh. and he gets hammered by at the Wilson. line of scrimmage. Oh, man. One rookie takes care of another. Wilson was their number one pick out of Tennessee. He was the captain of the national championship Tennessee Volunteers last year, and they said they put him in there for this particular reason. Wow, is that sudden impact. Watch this collision, folks. Johnson leaves his feet, and Al Wilson explodes into him. Look at that. That's giving it up right there, Al. And George Coghill is hurt. He plays in their nickel defense. One of the defensive backs is down. Tackles are always unofficial statistics, but that was Al Wilson's first tackle, official or unofficially. What an exclamation point. What a tackle. In return. Third and goal when we come back. Jimmy Johnson watching his Dolphins now try to punch it in. They had a lot of trouble doing it last year, as you saw. Third down and goal from the one. They give it to Johnson. The rookie is in for the touchdown. So each of the rookie backs, Conrad and Johnson, have scored their first NFL touchdown. After Kareem does all the hard work, <laughs> they yes. get to celebrate. Right. One guy does the heavy <laughs> lifting, and the other guy gets the glory. Well, probably the worst of all situations for Mike Shanahan is watching the Miami Dolphins come in here 
And you can see Conrad leading and Johnson just following and slithering his way into the end zone. Nice block by Richmond Webb, who was a holdout until last week. And the kick is good as Orlando Mare bangs it through. The Dolphins have scored 24 straight points and lead Denver by 17. A little frustration on the Denver sideline. John Tierlink, one of the assistant coaches, the pass rush specialist. And Dan Marino looking over um, the photos. His team has scored 24 straight points to lead by 17. They made some changes in the offseason, and we've seen those changes come to light tonight, especially Tony Martin and J.J. Johnson. Denver needs a big play. Chris Watson, a good-looking rookie out of Eastern Illinois, just attacked to provide it, perhaps, and he almost broke free. But the Dolphins corral him up at the 42-yard line. He looks good. He looks good on special teams, but he's got a long way to go in the, in the secondary. Patrick Sertain slow in getting up. Let's go to Leslie Visser. Al, there are now 16 names on the Ring of Fame here at Mile High, and our colleague is one of them, Tommy Jackson, the former linebacker. Tommy, of all your years with John, what stands out? I think his consistency, you know, people talk about how great he was as a quarterback, but I thought the consistency that he showed game in, game out, is what was able to carry the team year in and year out. What about a switch to your analyst role? What's happening here with your Broncos? Well, you know, I said that I thought that Brian would be the known factor. He's a young quarterback starting his first game. You know, he is going to make mistakes. Now, I think he's played pretty well tonight. But the defense, they got used to giving up 24 points and winning games by 10. When you get, give up 24 now, it's going to be 24-7. So I think that they really have to hone things up, especially in the passing game. But in the second quarter, late second quarter, and now in the third quarter, Jimmy Johnson beginning to attack them with a the run. And that demoralizes the defense. <laughs> be over there with Mike Shanahan in a few minutes. Thank you, Tommy. Back to you guys. Great analysis. Thank you, Leslie. On first down, this is Terrell Davis, and it's far too early to give up the run again. They've got to go back to the ground and have Davis pick up chunks of yardage. Al, we saw a whole bunch of games yesterday change in the fourth quarter immediately, and teams coming back from 21-point deficits. There's no way in the world that the Denver Broncos are even close to being out of that. And what you saw there was just getting back to basics. Give it to Terrell. Let him run up the middle. And what did he, what a just an absolutely fabulous collision between he and Zach Thomas. And he's done a good job against Davis tonight. Terrell, 34 yards on a dozen carries. And he chugs his way for three more here to the 48. And you saw that little counter play. A counter play meaning the running back starts one way and then comes back against the grain. That was the play that just totally took Miami out of their game plan last year in the playoffs here. And also remember that Miami was missing a few starters. You can see here the running backs start one way to the right, and then everybody comes back, and you'll see a pulling guard leading out. Miami had trouble defending that last year, and you can see this time they're waiting for it, and Zach Thomas is there. That's the guy that they have to stop. Got to get somebody on him. Greasy out of the gun, third down, and a long two. Ryan buys time, has the first down as he hits Chris Doring, a free agent. Pick up out of Florida, a kid who made the team with a good preseason and picks up his first reception of the night here. The one thing that you want to do now is just move him around a little bit, get him away from the pass rush, let him throw with a clear line of sight and not worry about getting hit. And this is where Brian Greasy will, will really find out how mature this kid is because this is where the game is really, really difficult for the quarterback to manage. We're going to see a lot of Doring because Rod Smith was hurt in the first half and has not been in. Greasy throws, looks for Goring, who is covered. Flag comes in. Sam Madison with the coverage. And they're going to call holding on Sam Madison. Again, coming into the game, we had asked Mike Shannon and Jimmy Johnson about the play of the defensive backs on either other teams, and they were saying how these guys hold and they try to get away with it, but the officials are on it tonight. Holding, 29, defense. First down. Report on Rod Smith, by the way, a right groin pull, questionable return. Hmm. And so you have McCaffrey and Sharp, of course, but now you go down to Marcus Nash and Chris Doring as your other receivers. You still have number 30 in the back. Yes, you do. <laughs> First down at the 39-yard line. 8-10 to go in the third. Miami leading by 17. Here's the blitz. Greasy throw. It's caught by Sharp, and Shannon taken out of bounds at the 33 by Calvin Jackson. The interesting thing about the, also about the way the Miami Dolphins play defense, they literally have 
nine out of 11 guys within 10 yards of the football. And guys like Shannon Sharp and the wide receivers should have a lot of opportunities to make plays like this outside, away from the safeties and down the field. And we, we saw one big one in the first half. We also saw a drop by McCaffrey, but this is the type of thing that you're going to have to do against them. Take it quick and get rid of it. The assistant head coach Dave Wants, that spends the first half upstairs, second half on the sidelines. This is Davis swinging it to the outside, and staying right with him was Calvin Jackson. When Terrell almost broke away. Jackson hung with him, takes him down by the shirt. <laughs> Went for a little ride there, too. <laughs> Davis last year, remember in that regular season game where they stymied him, that game meant nothing to Denver. They had clinched everything. Their unbeaten streak was snapped by the Giants the week before. In the postseason, of course, it means everything. It sure does. And Miami came in here banged up. And also what Denver did is they changed some of their blocking schemes up at the line of scrimmage and got somebody on Zach Thomas in the running game. Third and three, and Mike Shanahan calling a timeout. The type of thing you don't have to do with John Elway, but you do have to do with Brian Greasy back for a start. 7.08 remaining in the third. Big third and three coming up for Denver. Well, I wonder what this guy looks like. An available <laughs> boomer clone. Yeah! <laughs> oh, please. please. Can you do the Dallas game while I go play somewhere else next week? <laughs> oh, man. That's beautiful. This is a third and three, and after the timeout, they give it to Davis, and he can't get it. He is stopped at the 31 by Patrick Sertain. I think they're going to go for it here. And you're almost compelled to it. This yep. well, no, they're going to go for it. He's going to go for it. It's a 49-yard field goal attempt by Elam, which is certainly within his range in this thin air. But tonight, this is a key play in terms of really getting back. No, this, this will tell us a lot if they actually do snap the ball here. And Brian Greasy is throwing it. This will tell you an awful lot about how Mike Shanahan, and he's got him in the shotgun. This could be the quarterback uh, draw as well. Fourth and two, he sends Doring in motion. And the pass is caught as he goes to Doring. So the kid making his first start, Greasy goes to Doring, a free agent who just does make the team with a good preseason, and that's a vital first down. Not only does Mike Shanahan starting Brian Greasy tell you a lot, but to go on it in fourth and two in this part of the game and putting the man on the move, giving him one option to throw the football, tells you an awful lot about the confidence that Mike Shanahan has in his young quarterback. First down at the 25-yard line. And Miami showing blitz that time, but flag stops the play before its inception. And then a lot of action after the play in the secondary as well. Roger right the snap. False start. Number 77. Offense. Still first down. Tony Jones. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Dodge. Do not follow. Do not conform. Be different. Propecia. And by CNET, the source for computers and technology at CNET.com. And you can go to ESPN.com or NFL.com right now and try our enhanced TV during tonight's telecast. 6.08 remaining, clock ticking down for quarter. And here's the formation part of the, the offense for the Denver Broncos. Can they create mismatches? This is a first oh, and there it is. Greasy going for six, and it's tipped and incomplete. Shannon Sharp with Calvin Jackson step for step with him. That, that's the matchup that you're looking for. You're looking for your big tight end who has speed, who has wide receiver speed and tight end strength going against a strong safety, Calvin Jackson down the side. What a nice play by Calvin Jackson to be able to have the athleticism to go up and knock the ball down while running full speed with the tight end like Shannon Short. Second down, 15 now from the 30-yard line. We see underneath it is caught by Doring, but then he really pays the price, gets smacked by Zach Thomas. That guy is like the human missile out there. I remember, he's the kid who had no chance to make the team late pick out of Texas Tech four years ago, and now he has just signed a gazillion dollar contract. Well, I don't know about a gazillion, but the way he throws his body around out there, I don't know how much longer he's going to last. That time, the last play, Greasy gave Doring a chance to get away from Buckley, who slipped on the turf. And you can see right here, this is the pass blocking going on, and, and Greasy does a nice job of delivering the ball in the face of the rush. 
And Doring does a nice job of getting away from Buckley, but getting hammered by Zach. Third down and six from the 21. Here they come. The Dolphins on the blitz, and it's caught by Davis. So they go to Terrell Davis as a receiver for the first time and move the chains. First down at the 13-yard oh. line. Another great throw by Brian Greasy, a slant this time to his halfback. Not many, not many halfbacks can run this route, but look at the accuracy and the tight spiral on this ball. In his body, away from the defender, and Davis does a terrific job of shielding Sam Madison from the ball. Mm. Broncos not shy in going Madison's way tonight. Sometimes with a great corner, you never give many action. I want Dion, but a lot of action toward Madison's corner tonight. Davis for two takes it to the 11. Brian Greasy, 24 years old. You think of Gary Kubiak, who's their offensive coordinator. Gary could have been the coach at Colorado, the university in Boulder, but he turned that job down. Had he taken the job, he would have been coaching Mike Machetti, a quarterback there, who is actually four days older than Brian Greasy. <laughs> well, and Gary Kubiak is one of the bright young stars. Uh, in the NFL and in the coaching ranks. He will someday find himself the head man on the sideline in the NFL. Second down eight from the 11. The blitz again. Greasy hangs in. And is lucky it wasn't picked off by Sam Madison. And it was Zach Thomas again who puts Greasy in that position. Well, Brown will learn when you're down here, you want to throw the ball a little bit higher to your taller receiver. Again, shows great courage of standing in there. Zach Thomas, once again, is flying around. You can see it's a blitz. They don't have enough guys to block. And here comes Zach right up the middle, and Brian knows he's going to get hit. So you have to have courage to stand in there. But also, a little bit of experience will help you. You can throw a little bit higher and let your taller receiver, McCaffrey, out out rebound the shorter defender another key third down it's always key when you're down by 17 with about 18 minutes to play in the game third down and eight Move run Greasy he has room to run but he throws instead and it's caught by McCaffrey for the touchdown mm. I don't know Al, what else you could say about the kid he's doing everything that they're asking him He's, he's been getting hit. He's standing in there. He's moving around. He's not getting flustered. He's keeping his eyes up. And the thing that is really remarkable is the poise and the accuracy as, at which he has thrown the football. Absolutely. That's McCaffrey's fifth catch, second for a touchdown. Elam for the point after. And the crowd gets back in it as the kick is good. 342 remaining in the third. The Broncos needed seven. Get seven. 24-14 Dolphins. I mean, and Brock again, it was pretty quiet here, the quietest I've ever heard it. And this is where this is where the crowd really gets into it. And the special teams for the Denver Broncos need to make a play somewhere here. If they can get a fumble, put them right back in it. Jason Elam. Fielded at the eight-yard line by John Avery. And Avery, their third down back, brings it back up to the 30. Thomas gets into it with Darius Johnson. <laughs> It goes to show you how important special teams are for the Miami Dolphins when you have your best tackler on the kickoff return team blocking. Mm. Is reminder the season premiere of Drew Carey is full of big surprises and the small ones. That's Wednesday, September 22nd, right here on ABC. Did you see where our man Drew Carey was last night? I certainly did. He opened up the uh, help open up the new Cleveland Brown Stadium. Drew did a great job. Well, here you go. You can hear the fans now really getting into it, becoming literally the 12th man for the Denver Bronco defense. First down from the 29-yard line. The rookie, J.J. Johnson, to the 35-yard line. Again, we talked about J.J. Johnson before. They picked him up out of Mississippi State in the second round. They drafted Collins in the fifth. They love Collins. They love Johnson as well. But this kid was hurt during all of training camp. Didn't have one carry in a preseason game. And, and you're asking, and you're, makes his debut and you're asking a rookie to carry the load right now in a very crucial part of the game. Right. And Jimmy Johnson makes no bones about it. Get in there, kid. You're playing. With a rookie fullback. Right. Looking at a fullback and a tailback playing in their first NFL games. 
One follows the other, and Johnson gets tackled by Mobley up at the 37-yard line. It's going to be third down and about two. So you want to know why the Miami Dolphins have wanted a running game? It's for situations like this. You have to take the crowd out of the game. You have to be able to run the football. You have to be able to run some play-action passes. Take the pressure off your quarterback, who's been dealing with pressure his whole career. But it makes it a little bit easier for Dan Marino to function when you're able to run the football. Greg Robinson looking at his defensive unit. They need to dig in here. Third down and two. At the 37. Johnson puts his head down, is close. Stopped by Mobley. Very important measurement. You can see Dan Marino right there telling John, just go straight ahead. Don't try to dance on, on plays like this. Just go forward. And, and Mobley and Johnson had a tremendous co collision. I think he had a double meaning with that. He's also hoping he's got the first well, down. He was looking at, he said, he could just hit the hole. Hit yeah. the hole. Don't waste any time. Just get up there. A lot of times a, a veteran quarterback like that can tell the young kid, hey, look, we need two for a first down. Don't be dancing. Just get through the middle. And this one is going to be that short and that's going to compel Miami mm. to punt it's the right thing to do I mean you got to play the percent <laughs> right and you playing really well. so, so the rookie Brent Bartholomew to punt Miami had scored on its last four possessions that Chris Watson back to receive the kick one rookie punting to another Pick. Watson, nowhere to go. No blocking, no run back. OJ Brigance is down there for the tackle. And so Denver has Denver, Al Michaels with Boomer Esiason and Leslie Visser. Our 30th season of Monday Night Football. Next week we go to Dallas for the Cowboys off that scintillating comeback oh, yesterday. How take good on Detroit can Atlanta. Oh. <laughs> Finally, you get a chance to see him throw the ball a little bit. Five touchdowns for Troy. Overtime win against the Falcons next Monday. Greasy starts with a toss to Davis. And Terrell up to the 21-yard line for a gain of three. When you watch the Miami defense and you watch those safeties come flying out of the middle, you wonder, like, a little pitchback pass or something. A uh, flicker play would be huge down the middle. You would think somebody would get open. Those safeties are geared to stop the run. They're so close to the line of scrimmage that between Calvin Jackson and Brock Marion that Jimmy wants them to be part of their extended linebacking core. Second down and seven. So now you have Shannon Sharp covered down here by a linebacker. Here it comes. And Greasy going that way as Sharp runs it out and he catches it at the 29. And that's a first down tackled there by the linebacker, Derek Rogers. And, and now we, I, I, I've been saying it, it's about formations. It's about spreading the defense of the Miami Dolphins out. Again, while when you can have a safety cover him, it's a little bit better athletically. It's an equal matchup. But <laughs> look at the, the big old stiff linebacker has to try to make plays and cover him. And he's just too hard to cover for those guys. And here they go again. They're going to spread them out and they're going to try to create those matchups. And this time, they have a safety, Calvin Jackson covering him. On the 29 yard line, blitz again. Thomas knocks Greasy down, and the pass is dropped up at the 38 yard line. Second down and 10. Those are the chances you take when you spread out like that. You only have five guys left to block. Ooh. And the Miami Dolphins, and there's Terrell Davis on the sideline, looking like he's a little, a little nicked. He's been bothered by a shoulder problem in preseason. But there it is. That's the same blitz that the Dolphins have been bringing all after all evening. And one of the reasons they're getting there is because they're only blocking five and they're bringing six and nobody's there to pick up Zach Thomas. Second down and 10 now. You've got Derek Laville in the game to back up to Davis. And this is Derek, the X 49er. And what a backup he is. Derek Lavelle's first carry of the night is a first down of the 50. Tackled by Jones, and that's the way the third quarter is going to end. Oh. On an upbeat note for the Denver Broncos, who have gotten back into it. And that will be the end of the third quarter. With the score, Miami 24, Denver 14. And Monday Night Football returns after this for our ABC stations. You can see right here Tom Nalen taking off.
blocking Zach Thomas, and that's why Derek Laville gets through the middle like that. Block the best tackler in the NFL, and you can get some you can get some yardage on him. And that pass is thrown as the fourth quarter commences behind Byron Chamberlain on first and ten from the 49-yard line. So the fourth quarter, 15 minutes to go. The Broncos have won 24 consecutive regular season home games. At no point have they trailed by 10 points coming into any fourth quarter. By the way, during that streak, if you're wondering, Mike Shanahan's only sad retreat from the field would have been the playoff game against the Jacksonville in 96. Otherwise, they might have won three Super Bowls in a row and looking for four because they were the best team in the league going into that game. And here it comes again, second and ten. Greasy off his back foot is throwing deep, and that's knocked away, intended for Chamberlain, knocked away by Jackson, and no flag. Interesting, Al, how Miami has changed its defensive uh, tactics early in the game. They let Brian Greasy sit back there. They didn't blitz him, and since that time, since the one-yard down, they have blitzed him, and they're bringing the blitz, and a couple times that blitz has forced him to underthrow the ball, and you can see the bump right there against Chamberlain. And again, another hit, although it's not that bad. But the ball is not getting out there far enough because he has to retreat while he's throwing it as opposed to stepping into it like he did in the first quarter when nobody was in his face. Third down and 10. Corner blitz. This time it's sharp. Great move, but it doesn't net him the first down. He picks up eight. He gets it to the 41. It's going to be fourth and two. Jason Taylor was the guy who spun around. Interesting, interesting dilemma right here, whether they go for it or not. It looks yeah. like they are going to go for it. And Terrell Davis is back on the field. On fourth down and a short two. You know, to go back to that other play before, you want to get in Jimmy Johnson's doghouse pretty quickly, miss a tackle. Yes. Jerry Wilson missed the tackle on Shannon Sharp. But luckily, his teammates pursued and made the, made the play. Huge fourth down, fourth and two from the 41-yard line. There's the blitz. And he converted before, and this time, no! Here they come, and it's Zach Thomas with Miami's biggest defensive play of the night. That's the third time that they've gone to that play, and this time the Miami Dolphins overplayed it, and once again, Zach Thomas blitzed. And they are not sitting back. They're going after him. George Hill, the defensive coordinator, he loves Zach. So does Jimmy Johnson. First sack in tonight's game by either team. And what a time. Miami takes over on downs from the 50. Marino begins this drive with a handoff to J.J. Johnson for no gain. Tackled by Keith Trailer. After the game, a reminder, tune to ESPN Sports Center Monday night, football post-game show with live reports and analysis. Well, they'll have a lot to talk about. The one thing that the Miami Dolphins do not want to do right now is become too predictable, too conservative. There's too much time. And with the way the Denver defense is piling up at the line of scrimmage, some big plays could be happening downfield if they go for it. Second down and end, and Marino. Finds the open man, and it's the tight end, Drayton, and he bangs his way inside the 40, and that's a first down tackle by John Mobley. That's exactly the type of thing. They're going to gamble a little bit on defense. That time they brought a corner blitz to uh, Danny's backside. They were faking the run one way. He came out, coolly delivered the ball to Drayton. These are the types of plays that you need to be making at this point in the game. Do not sit on the ball. You can say a little fake there, not a great fake. Not known for his fakes. About everything else, but he's not a great, he's not a great ball player. He's a fabulous rusher, though, isn't he? <laughs> oh, he's beautiful. He's got great legs. First and ten at the 39-yard line. Matthew Jabbar picking up three, tackled by Mobley. Jimmy Johnson, among other things, this offseason retired for a day and then got married. He, he was going to have a party. He had a party for all of his friends and the front office staff before the start of training camp. And then he and his longtime girlfriend, Rhonda Rookmaker, about five hours into the party, go upstairs. He says to Dave once that come up with me. Rhonda gets her best friend. And that man right there, the Dolphin security <laughs> man, Sue Wanting, that man is a notary public, marries them upstairs. And then Jimmy comes down with Rhonda and announces we're newlyweds. And that's how Jimmy got married. Second down and seven. And that is caught by Tony Martin. 
for a first down. And now that I was telling you that's how you can have big plays down the field if you could just keep them out, run it off the play action, and Danny Marino is experienced enough to know to get it out on the sideline and he picks his spots. And this is exactly why they got Tony Martin as a free agent. They wanted him downfield. They like his size. You can see. Hmm. Here's the play action right up the middle. Watch. Watch the blocking. You can see Danny Marino throw the ball nice. He still has the arm. First down and 10. Martin has caught four balls for 101 yards. And Abdul Jabbar. Nothing happening. Tackled by Wilson. Just a postscript to the Johnson marriage. We talked with Jimmy before the game. They were married in their bathing suits. Yes. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't even know a notary republic could marry you. But and, and what do you say? Say, do you take him? You, you take, take him? her? Yep. All right, you're That's married. Okay. You're married? <laughs> Celebrate. Dance to the music. <laughs> well, I sense before the game and talking to them and their coaches that uh, the, the Miami Dolphins really felt like they had a real good opportunity winning this football game. And, and they certainly have shown that thus far. Second down and 10. Reno. He throws and it's McDuffie makes the catch at the two yard line. First down, first and goal. O.J. McDuffie last year led the league in receptions yet didn't go to the Pro Bowl, which is an oddity. Well, they had a, a lot of unique things happen to them regarding the Pro Bowl. But again, off the play action pass, the defense is looking run down here. And this is what they call a comeback. You go down about 12 yards and you come back down the sideline. The quarterback throws it away from the defender. It's a good, easy, safe pass, especially when it's one on one on the outside. They'd like to go to J.J. Johnson in goal line. They showed that earlier, and he's in there right now. He's already scored once tonight. Can he make it two? No. Mobley comes up along with his pal Keith Trailer. Trailer is still down. Keith Trailer, one of the, the good defensive tackles in the league. He and Trevor Price do a great job against the run, and he's going to need some help. Well, there's Greg Robinson, defensive coordinator of the Denver Broncos. He's got to figure out a way to stop this Miami Dolphin offense, and which has been pretty impressive this second half, and certainly mixing in the play action passes to the running downs, being non conservative. And on Sunday, September 26th, don't forget a, a new show will debut here on ABC. It is called Snoops. And that happens right before the practice on ABC. Keith Trailer comes off. Mike Lodish spells him along the defensive front in his second down and goal. Marino Bark signals out of the gun. And throws, and it is caught by McDuffie for the touchdown. What a terrific play design and what a great call and what a nice throw and catch by O.J. McDuffie and Dan Marino. They ran Drayton up middle. He took two defenders with him and McDuffie comes right underneath and Danny throws it right into his body. It was a good play design. Give Kippy Brown a lot of credit, the offensive coordinator for the Miami Dolphins. 410th touchdown pass of Marino's career and each one just adds to his own record. And the kick by Mate is good. With 9.31 left in the fourth quarter in Denver, the visiting Dolphins lead the champs 31 to 14. Back in Denver, where Miami leads by 17, and rarely has this stadium, which is in its next to last year of existence, been this quiet. They're building a brand new stadium. They just started construction in the parking lot here. That will be open in 2001. This is Chris Watson taking the Mate kick. And Watson, the rookie from Eastern Illinois, gets tackled by the kicker. Mare up at the 45, but there's a marker down all the way back at the 20-yard line. And Watson a little slow in getting up, and Mate also shaking on the play. And 99 times out of 100 in this situation is going to come back. Well, everybody seems to be inside the 10-yard line right now. <laughs> there is no infraction on the play. The block was from the side. <laughs> oh, now they're going to go back. Well, that's, that's good. I mean, that's uh, the official throws the flag, thinks he sees an illegal block. 
it has a conversation. You see Jimmy Johnson is yep. apoplectic. <laughs> Almost hit somebody with his headset. Yep. If you're just tuning in, Jimmy is leading by 17. Are you going to tell me that he wants to quit? <laughs> Wait, he may have to this. <laughs> Jimmy is Jimmy is good in any game for one or two good volcanic outbursts. And once again, the hair doesn't move. It does not. It never moves. From the 37-yard line, this is Davis. Up to the 40 goes Terrell. Second and seven. You now again, I go back to yesterday when there were five games, I believe, that uh, the winning team ultimately had to come from behind. Not only that, but four games ended in the last 15 seconds, and. Another game ended in overtime. Right, exactly. And when you look back, what, are the, what is the common thread through all that? You had five great quarterbacks on the five winning teams that brought their teams back from deficits. And that's why everybody in this league wants quarterbacks. They want guys that can forget what happened and somehow find out the way to win. Second and seven. That is Chamberlain making the catch, and that's a first down. Take a look at the, the four games. Favre's drive was just beyond magnificent yesterday to beat the Raiders. Uh, Brett leading him to that incredible win. Titans beat the Bengals after they had blown a huge lead. Steve McNair. Right. Patriots over the Jets with a venetary field goal in a wild Bledsoe. game. Jake the Snake. We're going to see Plummer in two weeks as Arizona hosts San Francisco in Phoenix 25-24. And then that note at the bottom, uh, four games won in the final 15 seconds of the fourth quarter plus the overtime Dallas-Washington game. First down, and this is Lavelle. Derek takes it to the 40. Gary Kubiak, now they have to begin with uh, the sure. word again, alacrity. Here we go. That's right. They have to move quickly. They have to get in and out of the huddle. Get, they have to get the plays in. They do not have much time to spend in the huddle. And maybe this is a spot where your young QB might not be as, as efficient as an older quarterback who can get him in and out and realize, you know, why you need to get in and out quickly. Need to move a little more dispatch than they just did right there. Second down and a short one. Fake toss, pressure on, but he gets it away, and it's a first down. Chamberlain tackled there by Sean Wooden at the 35. Again, I, I just don't want to belabor this point, but the guys standing around, they're not moving quickly. It just doesn't seem like yeah. it. just doesn't look like the team that we saw at the end of last year that was headed to the Super Bowl. Well, this I mean, is this is a team not used to being down by 17. Right. But it's also a team that doesn't panic. That, yeah, that's the other sense that you can look at. They're wasting about 10 to 15 seconds every time when they can get to the line of scrimmage a lot quicker. First and 10 at the 34 yard line. This is Davis, finds a crease, and the last man with a chance to knock him down is Wooden, and he gets him. This guy still has energy, and one of the reasons that he is as great as he is is he makes guys miss. That time he ran through two guys trying to tackle him at once. And this is Patrick Sertain who is hurt. Well, he actually ran right through two defensive backs that tried to sandwich him, and there's no way that you're going to stop Terrell Davis with a head of steam. So Sertain, that's the second time he's been down now in the last few minutes. 642 remaining in regulation. Denver trailing by 17. After the injury timeout, Patrick Sertain back on the Miami sideline. It is first down 10 for the Denver Broncos at the Miami 21. The officials just put 10 seconds back on the clock, on the game clock. And the way the Broncos are kind of just posing around here. They need every every second they can get. And after an injury timeout, they start the clock as they do here. Greasy throws to the end zone and almost pulled in. Sharp had body position on Jackson that time, but couldn't make the catch. Ooh. And you could see as Greasy was rolling out, he was being pursued by Derek Rogers. And this is the speed. This is the speed of the Miami Dolphin defense that makes them so good. And here he comes around the corner unblocked and you could see this big linebacker getting around. And again Brian can sense him. That's the other thing that quarterbacks have. They have that sixth sense where they can make a play but Shannon Sharp usually makes that catch. Second down and ten at the 
the one yard line. Greasy fumbles and then recovers it himself to keep the ball but lose it down in a couple of yards as well. Going to hang with your center, have to stay under there. He knows that they're blitzing, so he's trying to get out quicker than normal, but you have to stay with your center. You have to ride and keep the ball. And And Denver has to take a timeout with a third and 12 upcoming. And Terrell Davis uh, showing his frustration. Monday Night Football is brought to you by Miller Lite. Taste a true Pilsner. Dell Innovative Computer Solutions from the company that pioneered direct around the world. Be direct Dell. When you have it your way, it just tastes better. And Monster.com, there's a better job out there. Is there really a better job out there, Al? Not in my eyes, baby, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Sunday night football on ESPN. The Jets against Buffalo. From Buffalo, each team uh, trying to get on track after yesterday. And we take our act next Monday night to Texas Stadium or Irving, Texas. The Atlanta Falcons and the Dallas Cowboys next week on Monday night football. Speaking of the New York Jets, uh, they did lose Vinny Testaverde. He underwent surgery for his Achilles. Uh, it is not a career-ending surgery. Dan Marino had one. So did Jumbo Elliott. We fully expect him to be back next year and ready to go. Third down and 12. Greasy for the end zone. Underthrows it. Knocked down. Nearly picked off. Looking again for McCaffrey. But Sam Madison got there, and there's a flag down. Flag at the 15-yard line. It's going to be against Denver. When he pass interference against the Denver Broncos. One thing Brian Greasy will learn as he gets older is that he can really just let the ball fly. He doesn't always have to be so perfect with it. And I think a couple times here he's just tried to lay it in there so perfectly. Just let it go and let it get it, let it get it out to your receivers and let them make a play on it. How long does that take for a quarterback to learn that? You just have to get comfortable with the whole experience. 87 offense is declined. Fourth down. McCaffrey McCa pushing off. McCaffrey actually has uh, Madison beat badly. And Brian just has to throw it out and just let it go and get out there. And it takes a while to get used to knowing where your receivers are going to be. And you can see right here at the top of your screen, watch the push off right there in the pull by. He has them beat and just lets it hang. And you're down by 17. So at some point, you need a field goal. They'll go for it here on fourth down and 12. It's the right call to make. It's, but it's no good. He missed it. From 41 yards. So Shanahan facing a fourth down and 12, knowing you need 17 points. So at some point, you do need the three. He figured he'd get it there. And Jason Elam, a Pro Bowl kicker, tonight has had a 44 yarder block, and he has missed on a 41 yarder. And this place is dead silent. Now, when we were walking around on the field before the game, I, I just had the sense. But something wasn't right for the Denver Broncos and maybe it's because John Elway is not in uniform I don't know but it just seemed like the Broncos were flat maybe a little bit overconfident but I also sense from the Miami Dolphins that they really felt that they could come in here and win tonight and I, I didn't realize that they would get up this far this quickly but certainly give your credit to Jimmy Johnson and Dan Marino and the entire Miami, uh, Miami Dolphins team. First half from the 31 yard line and Dan can start working the clock right now out of a tight formation here. And he gives the ball off to Abdul Jabbar. Flag comes in at the end of the play. And that's going to be holding on the Miami Dolphins. I think they're going to call holding on Troy Drayton I believe. Holding, 89, offense, first. still first down. Hey, Perry, the other tight end, and let's go to Leslie Visser. Leslie? Al Floyd Little was known for his remarkable running style and his equally strong work ethic. He was, of course, one of the most famous number 44s. You referred before, Al, to the Orange Men of Syracuse. He carried the load here in Denver for nine years, and now he's back to help honor John Elway. Floyd, what are your strongest memories of John Elway? Just his leadership abilities and all the things he did for not only Denver, but the National Football League. I think John's name is synonymous with success in, uh, all over the world. They could probably use a little bit of him tonight. What about Terrell Davis? He's breaking all of your records. He's got a couple more to go, but he has had a great career here in a very short period of time. He's got some good help on the offensive line. He's got some great receivers. 
God bless them. <laughs> well, they've retired only three numbers here. Number 44 is one of them. Back to you guys. Thank you, Leslie. And a lot of those Ring of Honor guys are all here tonight, and all of them wanted uh, to send their very best to another man, Goose Gonsolin, who's uh, not in the greatest of health right now. Goose unable to be here. Play with the Broncos uh, from uh, their inception in 60 through 66. And you see his name there, and uh, the guys want to make sure that uh, Goose knows they're thinking about him. Second down. And long from the 23-yard line. That was the bar again. Now, as we talk about John Elway and his retirement and the party that they threw for him tonight, I, I just marvel at Dan Marino and his ability to have the passion for this game of football that is just nothing but struggle after struggle year in and year out and you can take a look at his numbers an efficient solid game by one of the all time greats and really that that is quite remarkable well, it's 100 pass rating is a, is great you normally win the game right. and, and only against the the Broncos has he done it to uh, what amounts to a uh, season plus this third down with JJ Johnson on third and 17 they're just taking time off the clock, and not only do they take time off the clock, they <laughs> pick up about 12 yards. Braxton makes the tackle. It's fourth down. You cannot minimize the significance of a Bronco win, if, or of a uh, Dolphin win. If they win this game, you have not only gone on the road and beaten the team at home that never loses at home. In fact, for three years they haven't lost a game here. But your primary contender in your division has just lost its quarterback for the year the Jets another contender has lost the game yesterday Buffalo to Indianapolis New England is a team that you know you, you only fear to a certain extent minus Robert Edwards with a lot of question marks and there's Indianapolis a, an up-and-coming team but a young team and here you are having gone into Denver mm -hmm. beaten the Broncos that with the test of early thing and nobody wants to see anybody hurt but a fact is a fact I mean the Jets are severely diminished by what happened yesterday without question the two big winners yesterday are the or well, this weekend probably if the Dolphins hang on are the New England Patriots and the Miami Dolphins I mean you go into these teams that are expected to fight for the Super Bowl and you win in their home stadium five of the last 12 Super Bowl champions as you can see losing in their opening game the following year each of them on Monday Night Football, and we're about to make it six. Well, <laughs> Bartholomew's kick, fair caught by Watson at the 24-yard line. Denver does not have a timeout. 408 left in regulation. And while high starting the linebacker, quiet night, one tackle, but not a quiet last couple of weeks for him. Uh, I'm sure many of you read it. it was a huge story here for a while, but it's died down. Uh, they're considering charges against Bill, his wife, his wife's friend, and a doctor for possession of an illegal prescription drug. So, Romanowski on the sideline with plenty on his mind over the last fortnight as Greasy gets uh -oh. pressured, loses the ball, picked up. No, Jason Taylor almost picked it up. Now he gets it and gets into the end zone for a touchdown. It was stripped by Rich Owens, picked up by Jason Taylor on the second try and in he goes for the coup de grace well <laughs> the learning process continues and uh, they get to Brian Greasy this time without the blitz and and this guy here you know he's just too good looking to be a defensive lineman by the way Al. is he doing signing orders? he might be I don't know <laughs> he he's wanted a big the tall rangy <laughs> defensive end comes right around the corner beats number 77 Jones Owens is in there this is not the fault of Brian Greasy. This is just an active defensive front on the part of the Miami Dolphins. Mate for the point after. That goes as an 18-yard sack, a fumble, and a touchdown. 356. Our, Greasy's had an okay night in some respects, Boomer. If you're Mike Shanahan, I mean, has the lot been completely cast right now? They go to Kansas City next week. No, he's still, he's still your starting quarterback. He's played well tonight. He's not had a bad game. The defense has not done anything for the Broncos. I mean, the, the Miami Dolphins come in here with a, an offense that had struggled to run. Not, not a great passing offense the way that we used to know it. There's Bubby Brister. Uh, I don't think Brian Greasy did anything to hurt himself. Uh, you, know, you have to have good special teams play. You know, he didn't block for the field goal. He didn't block for the punt. And he delivered the ball confidently. And there's Chris Miller, the third team quarterback. And 
Chris had a, a fantastic game against the 49ers in the last preseason game here. So I don't necessarily know that the quarterback position is, well, I know it's not the problem here. The problem here is really when you look up the scoreboard, 38 points. Yep. And the defense, I guess, literally gave up 31 of those 38 point points. Well, the Dolphins in one fell swoop on one night may have uh, vaulted into a position along with the Jaguars as the primary contenders in the AFC. Well, it's a long way to go, and I always tell you it's uh, it's, uh, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Right. And, and, and ultimately, injuries usually dictate what happens to teams. So ask the Jets. Exactly. Well, they don't have the answer yet, but it's not good. Touchback. Let's go to Leslie. Al, it was an agonizing day last April 20th for running backs coach for Joel Collier, the running backs coach, when he learned that his niece, Stephanie Hummel, was trapped in Columbine High School in the choir room for more than four hours during the bloodbath. Stephanie said that with the help of her family, her uncle, her friends, she has moved past this. Joel, who lived in Littleton, Colorado for 20 years, said he did not know that Stephanie was completely safe until he saw her leaving the school on television. Stephanie said that most of all now she realizes, Al, how precious life is. Oh, boy. All right, thank you, Leslie. I'll bet as the carry is out to the 24 by LaVille. In fact, the, the, the Broncos are wearing a small insignia uh, with the, the colors of Columbine High School. Uh, and th there it is. You can see it right there, the blue indicative of the Columbine flower, the state flower, the ribbon of, uh, of Colorado. And uh, there is the, the Bronco tribute to that awful day in, uh, in April. Second and five from the 24. Greasy throws and it is caught by Howard Griffith up to the 31. So just playing out the string right now are the Broncos who get ready for a short week and a trip to Kansas City in Arrowhead Stadium on Sunday. And Kansas City had a rough opening yesterday against the Chicago Bears. Dick Jaron gets his first win in Chicago. And I'm sure Gunther Cunningham is going to have his team revved up. I'm, most of the guys are probably watching tonight. Brian Greasy now just has to sit in the pocket, deliver the ball, don't force things, just continue to try to move the move the football team, look at the films tomorrow, and then try to decide where they can improve. Griffith. Up to the 46. The Dolphins, meanwhile, go home. They'll face Arizona in their home opener Sunday. The Dolphins will go partially home, we understand tonight, as you look at Marino, with Hurricane Floyd off the Florida coast and we're not going to be the weather channel right here I don't know exactly where it is at the moment but it was our understanding before the game that the Dolphins might land in Fort Myers and then bus home and they are going to land in Fort Myers and it will be a two hour bus ride down to or over to uh, Fort Lauderdale this is caught by LaVille and he's out of bounds at the 39 as we hit the two minute warning two minutes to go and in a way it's a shocker the mass destruction already underway. The brand new stadium to uh, house the Broncos ready for in 2001, right next to Mile High. They're going to tear down Mile High. Along the way, they're also going to tear down the McNichols Arena because they have the new Pepsi Center that opens up. So a lot of construction and demolition going on right there. There are the cranes, and McNichols is beyond the scoreboard. And the Avalanche and the Nuggets will play in the Pepsi Center this season. And last night, the the McNichols Center hosted his last concert, and it would figure the last concert should be ZZ, ZZ Top. Tom. What was right? the first concert, wasn't it? No, the first was concert it? should have been ABBA, right? <laughs> I mean, if it ends with ZZ Top, you start with ABBA. I, I don't know. Oh, I see where you're going. <laughs> well, oh, you know where I'm going. You're, you're beautiful. You're so happy with yourself right now. No, I'm not. I'm not. Poor. <laughs> you're hip is what you are. Yeah, right. I'm hip and trendy. The last song I remember the words to is Don't Hang Up by the Orlons. <laughs> well, for John Elway, it was a big night. But not for the Broncos and uh, John in repose right now and he and uh, his family and he has a, a beautiful family wife Janet who had her own health problems last year and happy to report that she's great from the 39 yard line here is Lavelle. And Derek picks up a first down. And you can see who's running after him is Zach Thomas. There's no give up in him. He's he's going to go until the final whistle blows. That's. That is the leader of the Miami Dolphin defense and, and the key to the defense 
is to get somebody on him if you want to run against the Miami Dolphins. He is a very sure tackler. He's the signal caller. And he is the heart and soul of that side of the football for the Miami Dolphins. And Pat Bolin, the uh, the owner so used to hoisting Super Bowl trophies in recent times, making his way to the line. First and ten. And that is in the traffic and caught. Chamberlain hanging with it. Byron Chamberlain. Greasy also goes down. First down at the five. Well, Brian Greasy's taken an awful lot of pops back there, but Brian Chamberlain has shown us something in preseason, has certainly shown us something here. He will catch the ball in traffic, and he knows he's going to get hit. We saw this earlier from John Avery dropping the football, but you know you can make a play like that. And once again, there's Jason Taylor back there just ragdolling Brian Greasy. That's just the way it goes. First and goal from the floor. saw Pat Bowen ran into Edgar Kaiser who owned the team before the game when the, when Elway was actually procured in that trade after Baltimore drafted him and it was uh, Edgar who uh, got Elway and then sold the team to Bolden for the equivalent of about 90 million dollars in the mid 80s in the meantime right now the Dolphins are trying to avoid the largest opening day loss by a defending Super Bowl champion Dallas lost at Washington in 93 the mitigating circumstances of that loss no image and this is caught for a touchdown so McCaffrey has the hat trick that's three for Ed tonight but a Pyrrhic one well when you think back about this game you're going to think about think back about drop passes you're going to think back to block block kicks miscues on special teams but I, I honestly believe that Brian Greasy represented himself well. And this is not an easy throw. This is an out pattern down here. You have to make sure that the defender is off your receiver and delivered the ball accurately and on time. And that time Brian did that. Elam for the extra point. Just an asterisk. Uh, McCaffrey tying a Bronco team mark with three touchdown receptions. In one game. If you look at Greasy's numbers, he's 24 40 for 270 yards and three touchdowns and no interceptions. And I'm sure that, uh, as you can see, uh, Kubiak, his offensive coordinator, talking to him. I mean, it's not a bad rating, but again, you know, ratings are not what's important. What's important is winning. And I'm sure that there are mistakes that he's made, but he's also done well. And I'm sure Kubiak is telling him that you did well tonight, kid. You need some help. You got to have help from defense. You got to have help from special teams. You can't do it all by yourself. When you said ratings aren't important, our sales department had a collective <laughs> heart attack. <laughs> um, football has a different type of rating. <laughs> right. 34 seconds remaining. We go to Dallas next week. Looking forward to that very much. Always a treat at Texas Stadium on a Monday. You've never been there on a Monday night, right? Uh, no, I've never been there. And, and interesting thing about Dallas, the, uh, the league tomorrow, NFL, will, will announce the situation uh, regarding Leon Lett. And, right. and what his future uh, holds, uh, whether or not he will be suspended, and if he is suspended, how long will he be suspended? Clearly there is a suspension in his future. The question about Dallas next week, will Dion play? He might. Will And for Atlanta, will Chris Chandler play with the uh, pulled well, hamstring? And that, that is uh, still in doubt. We understand that uh, you know, they're going to have to obviously work on it. And then, by Thursday or Friday, Dan Reeves should have a better idea. Onside kick obviously coming up here. And with the good hands people out there, that's when you put people like uh, your wide receivers, oh. and that's O.J. McDuffie. You know, when you're exposed like that, like O.J. McDuffie was, and you have about eight guys missling down on you, you have to feel like you are up in the air for <laughs> four or five mm -hmm. seconds when literally it's only about a second. Last home lost, December of 95 to Seattle. And... Uh, it's incredible to see Mile High Stadium with a football game still in progress and so few people in the seats. And for Jimmy Johnson, well, a guy who almost retired in January. Remember, seven boxes from his office were in the trunk of his car. Oh, well, you know, he left this stadium, Al, and he was demoralized after just getting trounced by the Broncos in the right. playoffs, but certainly has come back. Yep. Dolphins. <laughs> Dolphins' 300th win in the history of their franchise came in in 1996. 19, 1966 and for Mike Shanahan the first time he leaves this field in a long time with that sort of look as the Dolphins head home to face Arizona next week 
with a 38 to 21 victory over the Denver Broncos. Hey, I hope we don't do. Two of the very best exchanging uh, acknowledgments there. And as the Dolphins fly east with a win in hand, we'll return. We'll be back at Mile High Stadium in Denver with the play of the game. John Elway night, but the Miami Dolphins come away with the win, and here is the CNET.com play of the game. It came at a point when Denver was trying to get back in it. They'd uh, made it 24 to 14, and the Broncos are on the move, but here came Zach Thomas. Such an active night, he'd had only four and a half sacks in his first three years in the league. He sacks Greasy there, and the Miami Dolphins coast home with the win. There's Zach with Leslie. Al, Jimmy Johnson had said they had to prove that they could play quality defense on the road. That they certainly did. Tell us about the sack. Well, it was a fourth down play, and uh, I had Terrell Davis man-to-man, -man, and they ran that play a couple times, and I just came off the corner. And when he tried to block a lineman, I came free, and I just took him to the ground. You know, it was a great play, you know, first game of the year, and hopefully we can keep this up and start winning on the road. What was so different from this game from last January? Must have felt a lot better. Well, I mean, you know, first of all, John Elway's a little different, but uh, uh, they, they got a great offense, and they they really ran the ball good on us, And but we we, we, we didn't break at times, and I think uh, we came through, and uh, hopefully we can do this for the rest of the season. We'll see them again. We'll definitely see them in the playoffs. I know that for sure. And they got a great offensive line, great offense, so, you know, they're going to have something for us like they did last time. Mike Shanahan said they had to identify you during the game. How were you able to have eight tackles in one sack? Well, you know, they let me come free a little bit. I got a lot of pressures on uh, Greasy, and I think, you know, if we get pressure on him, he rattles a little bit. But he's a great, smart quarterback. He did a good job today, though. So did you. Congratulations, Zach. Back to you guys. Thank you, Leslie. We're on our way to Texas now, where the Cowboys next Monday night will be hosting the Atlanta Falcons. It's our 30th season of my football. Continues. Final score here. The Miami Dolphins win at the 8 to 21. Al Michaels, for Boomer Esiason, and Leslie Visser saying good night from Denver. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Now stay tuned to ABC for your late local news or other programming. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence.